are these elements of creation? One, the most fundamental one, is physical competencies, your body. So this curriculum is struggling to make sure Kenyan children have strong bodies. That's why physical education is compulsory in this curriculum. It is trying to develop physical psychomotor ability of children. Competency. Physical competency. If you are at the age of 30 and you cannot run 100 miles, are you physically competent? If you can't make babies, are you physically competent? Yeah. You can add up the gaps. Physical. The element, one element of competency is physical competence. And that's why in this curriculum, physical education is compulsory. And that's why every teacher that goes to a teacher training college must do physical education. Not theoretically, but practically, to an extent that the lady who died at Islamic Teachers Training College at the age of 50, she was trying to jump. It was too late for her. Then she landed on her head, and that was the end of her life. You heard about that? A lady was doing an outdoor activity. A lady teacher. She was a little bit elderly. Then she was asked to jump. And there was a mattress on the other side, but she couldn't jump very high. So she landed on the ground instead of the mattress. And she broke her neck. And that was it. She died. So, competency of any physical competency. Competency appeal in emotional competency. Emotional competency. Ability to accommodate others, even if you hate them. You don't have to love everybody. Can you love everybody? No, it's not possible. See you? So even if you hate them, you still have to accommodate them. You are emotionally strong. Kenya is made up of people of different tribes. Yeah, ethnicity, religion, and we are, you know, we are a cocktail. Why you vote ni lazima uwe na emotional competency. Za kuweza ku accommodate kila mtu. Otherwise, you'll die of heart attack. You'll be stressed, you'll be depressed. Kama you don't have emotional competency. Again, also, emotional competency in this curriculum says that when you love, love enough. Because one day the person you love, you might end up hating that person. Sindio? How many of you have fallen in love? Itakila. Fear God. How many of you have seriously fallen in love? Like Romeo and Juliet, Lela Majunu. Not the fake one of, I love you, love me, and then when I leave, I can go to hell. I want the genuine one. How many of you have really been a genuine, in a genuine love relationship? You have been Malim? Uh, how was it? Can, can, can you educate us? Was your heart able to hold it, carry it, manage it? It was part of your life? <laughs> and then what happened? Is it continuing? Was your heart broken? <laughs> so, uh, and that's why we say, you know, they say love lands by laughing fast to speak, then slice, slice, then cares passing greets. Mana mechizangoma pepa mimgandama. You should be able to manage that the, the, the curriculum is kind of uh, building the emotions. You get my point? When you hate, you hate enough, and when you love, you love enough. And then you can accommodate those who you love and those you don't, you don't love. Third component of the competencies is social competency. Avoiding being a social misfit. Social competency. Social competency. Unaweza kuingiliana na watu wengine bila ya shida. Then we have moral competencies. What do you think is the objectives of people who are struggling to become accountants in Kenya? To save their company's money, employer's money, or... What do you think is the, is the objective of many people who join politics? Eh? To earn without moral competencies. Eh? Ebu, tell me, a woman who is expecting a baby has been brought to a hospital, like a gahan there, and she's at the reception, and the water has broken. The baby is about to come out. And the doctor comes and says, you must deposit 100,000 before I take you to the delivery room. And the lady says, I don't have 100,000. Then you can give back there. And the doctors go. Is there moral competence there? What about the lawyer? Who knows very well the property is yours. But it's been given 1 million shillings to make sure it goes to another person. And argues in the court until you lose your property. Is that morally upright? So... 
CBC is trying to make our edu education morally palatable. <laughs> ili ukiwa daktari uwe daktari kwa sababu unataka kutibu watu sio kutengeneza senti ili ukikuwa mwalimu uwe mwalimu sio unataka kutengeneza pesa ya tuition au unakuwa mwalimu si na you know you know what i'm talking about eh yeah. napigia mzazi simu namwambia huyu mtoto wako mjinga wa hesabu huyu huyu hasi pita hesabu huyu sasa mimi nataka kumsaidia huyu mtoto huyu lakini itakuwa ni 1500 kwa mwe uko sawa hapo haya alafu akianza kukulipa hiyo 1500 ndio unaweka 90 kwa report 90 <laughs> That's just a commercial break, eh? don't worry. Eh? I know none of you does that here. So what, what I'm saying to say is that they, they, they claim the philosophy of this curriculum, that they want to revive the moral principles of Kenyans. You get my point? You go for an interview, somebody has a first class degree in engineering, and another one has a diploma with pass, and there is a position of engineering in the Ministry of Work, but this one with diploma of pass, no somebody in that ministry gets the job, and you with your first class, you go home. Now that moral competencies and then the ultimate one is spiritual competencies. I know all of you believe in God. We don't have atheists here. Okay? So when we we talk about competencies, that's what it means. That means ability to operate fairly in your in your life. Okay? So curriculum is the vehicle through which a nation is built. Kwamba nchi inajengwa na curriculum. Na ndio maana unakuta hawa mashehe waliosomea Madina Saudia they are Saudis by definition they are not Kenyans. Na wale waliokwenda kusoma Sudan they are Sudanese by definition they are not Kenyans. Na wale waliokwenda kusoma Yemen they are Yemenis by definition. Na yule aliyokaa hapa kaosomea na mwalimu Faraj hawana is a Kenyan of style. Because your brain is made up by the manhaj you go through. Na ndio maana mtu aliyesoma Uingereza mara nyingi anakuwa na fikra za ki Uingereza. Raila alisoma wapi? Russia. You see some Urusi in him? Do you see it? Yeah. Do you see some Urusi in him? Yeah, a little bit Urusi. Ah, uh, Uru Kinyara alisomea wapi kama alisoma? Alisomea wapi kama alisoma? Alisomea wapi kama alisoma? America, see <laughs> Very liberal society, isn't it? Everything is all right. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. You want to become anything? Just become. <laughs> Today you are a human being. Today, tomorrow you want to change to be a monkey. It's okay. You can become a man. Today you are a man. You're okay. Tomorrow you want to become a woman. You can become. No problem. Very liberal society. Now, a curriculum. Nam tu aliyesoma uchaina anakuwa vipi? So a curriculum ni vehicle. That, that's why every nation has to be very careful na manhaj. Ile manhaj. Ile manhaj. Kwa sababu hiyo ndiyo inajenga fikra za za watu. Na maisha ni fikra. Hakuna kitu kibaya kama kuwa na ufukara wa fikra. Afadhali ukuwe na ufukara wa pesa, lakini usikuwe na ufukara wa fikra because minus fikra you are done. Alafu then minus fikra and then minus discipline, no adab, double tragedy. Mbili. Sasa hii curriculum the philosophy yake inasema ni kujaribu kurudisha kurudisha the glory of education in Kenya kwa sababu education is defined as a process of acquiring knowledge skills positive attitude so that you can have the best life in this world and the best life ukikufariki huko wewe na Mungu wako sasa I don't know if you are understanding me competence is to maelewa ndio and this is uh, the meaning of curriculum so competency based curriculum yani e manhaj ambayo yaitwa CBC na nimesema mwanzo iliitwa uh, value based education curriculum ni curriculum ambayo inazingatia the four C's of 21st century four C's of 21st century kwa nasema ulimwengu mzima globally they are saying for education to be education it must meet the requirement of four C's Yaani iwe inakwenda kulingana na principles of four C's. C ya kwanza ni C ya communication. Yaani the ability kutumia maneno yako kuathiri wanafunzi wako na kuathiri mtu mwingine yote. Na nimesema hapo awali, open your mouth and you tell the whole world the kind of a person you are. Fungua mdomo wako, sema kitu 
Unajua hapa nyinyi mlivoketi hakuna mtu anajua nani ana diploma nani ana bachelor of science nani ana bachelor of education nani ana art hakuna Lakini if you open your mouth to speak somebody might guess kwamba you must be a scientific person you must be an art based person you must be a religious based person when you open your mouth ukifungua mdomo wako unauambia ulimwengu wewe ni mtu wa aina gani so communication communication yani the curriculum will empower young people watoto vijana wetu wawe na ujasiri wa kuzungumza bila uoga waje na ujasiri wa kuzungumza na ufasaha unaostahili so the first c of the 21st century ambayo ndio c ya competency based curriculum ni communication second c ni c ya collaboration kwamba wewe peke yako hauwezi kufaulu ni lazima ushirikiane na watu wengine remember team work works Ebu, let me take you back to a classroom please okay don't get offended say every dream requires a scheme and a proper team to reach its rim otherwise light will dim and you will never ha- you will never be able to blame ah uh, nyingi uh, wengine mniangalia sana waje kidogo tuanze tena si ndio every dream requires a scheme and a proper team to reach its rim otherwise light will dim and you'll have nobody to blame you are the one to walk away with shame because you never realize your dream Did you understand that? You did? Yeah. So the principle of collaboration means people must learn to work together. If we do very well in English but then fail in mathematics, are we going to get a good mean grade? Never. If we do very well in chemistry and then kids fail chem- uh, biology, will they become doctors? No. If kids do well in physics but then they fail mathematics, will they become engineer? No. If you don't get C plus in mathematics will you do bachelor of education? No. You can't. You must have a C plus in maths these days to do a bachelor of education. Mana C plus even if you have a B minus whatever you have you can't do bachelor degree of education. You must. So if the mathematics teacher is not doing their role, even if somebody wants to do IRE Arabic, there must be mathematics. If you want to do diploma in secondary education of Arabic Islamic, you want to teach IRE and Arabic you are going to college you must have a d plus also in mathematics and you must have a c plane in english so no there has to be some team work ili watu wanafanya kazi pamoja ili kusudi sote tofauti alafu the third c is the c of critical thinking critical thinking na unajua hiyo it is a disease with the millennial generation they go with 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 moods they go with crowds they go with peer influence they go with styles they go with the trending events they don't care they don't think they don't think they don't think now the curriculum is saying we must teach them how to think because the 844 was a cramming business okay worst in class 8 just dot 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 that doesn't help the kid have to critically think you have to analyze So the curriculum says the, four, the third C is the C of critical thinking and then the fourth C is the C of creativity creativity kuwa mbunifu innovation is the order of the day squeezing kwa sababu kazi za kuandikwa hamna tena hasa watu lazima watafute mbinu ya my friend don't you think is an irony you did mechanical engineer but then you cannot repair a car isn't it an irony Yeah? you are an electrical engineer but you can't even fix a bulb by the way those engineers are here in Kenya they're in offices as directors in public works they have engineers mechanical whatever civil engineer but they can't even build a simple structure all was theory 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 have you seen somebody who has a degree in IT and doesn't know how, even how to operate word and has a degree in IT computer science Na wewe ukitengeneza powerpoint 
na kuna degree so that's that's what says we have to improve our creativity ili hata ukitoka university kama hujapata kazi you can create your own employment job creation not job seeking looking for your own ways of surviving this cold creep so the competency are not simply identify are infused in the choices of learning expectation kwamba wana inaaminika kwamba watoto wetu wakipitia hii mtaala mpya wanaitwa mtaala hii manhaji mpya hii curriculum mpya basi hawa vijana wetu watakuwa na communication skills nzuri watakuwa na collaboration watakuwa na critical thinking na watakuwa wana thinker creatively sasa hii mtaala ulitoka wapi where did it come from where did these people these educationists in Kenya and particularly the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development eh? how did they arrive to this competence based curriculum they used the following documents so today if you will take them to court watakushinda kwa sababu hawakulala wakaamka wakaamua tu kutengeneza mtaala ama manhaji mpya ah uh-uh. waliangalia vision 2030 ya Kenya Kenya inaenda wapi na miaka ya 2030 inasemekana Kenya itakuwa industrialized nation sisi wote tutakuwa matajiri by then so kama unataka kuwa tajiri usife mapema ngoja 2030 utakuwa tajiri tu hiyo it's automatic because that's what the 2030 vision says every Kenya will be wealthy will be rich so uh, looking at that and looking at 844 they realized it will not be possible kuwa industrialized nation if we continue with 844 so we have to go to the cbc ambayo ni miaka mingapi miwili ya nursery sita ya primary mitatu ya junior secondary mitatu ya senior secondary na mitatu ya university which is a copy paste of canada and nigeria copy paste There's nothing new You get my point? Yes, nothing new. And the number of years are the same that somebody spends in school. So it's only the the the, the demarcation and the, the the timings that are are different. So and then again in our constitution 2030 the bill of rights haki the bill of rights the bill of rights. Now if you look at the bill of rights compare it to what is happening with 844 and the examination and the subjugation and corporal punishment and many other things now 844 had to be replaced by cbc another document they used was sustainable development goals the united nation unesco that at the end of the day every developing country will be a developed nation by the year 2050 okay that means the world will run an industrialized economy by 2050 so if the world kama ulimwengu itakuwa industrialized okay the whole world then 844 was an outdated program that's why we went to a uh, cbc and then we had what we call remember we are now a uh, uh, jumuiya ya africa mashariki hapa buhurera wanafunzi wana wanasoma national anthem ya jumuiya africa mashariki ah mtafungwa nyinyi mtafungwa squeeze imekuwa mandatory according to the education act and the secular of magoha 17 whatever whatever that after the national anthem the next one is a uh, anthem ya jumuiya ya afrika mashariki okay kwa hivyo do something <laughs> kwa hivyo ile inasemekana kwa sababu sisi we were the only different nation uganda was 27 27423 uh, tanzania 27423 a uh, two three lakini like kenya was 844 asa we had to change to harmonize the curriculum of east africa na sasa hizi congo imeingia ndani burundi imeingia ndani rwanda imeingia ndani uh, na kadhalika Zim, uh, whatever uh, zambia imeingia ndani sasa jumuiya ya afrika mashariki imepanuka na kwa hivyo lazima tukue na mtaala mmoja zamani ilikuwa mtu akimaliza form 4 kenya akienda tanzania hawezi kwenda direct university lazima afanye one year pre university course ukimaliza form 4 kenya unaenda uganda university you have to do pre one year pre university course you go to uk you want to go to university one year pre university because they never recognized 844 form 4 as form 6 you get my point so because of that we had to now go back also to the drawing boards and that's why we came up with cbc and then remember the 21st learning skills and approaches 
Katika maisha ya mwanadamu kuna 5 C's ni muhimu kuzioa. Na kuna 5 C's lazima uzitaliki. Wacha nitumie lugha hiyo labda utaelewa vizuri. Kuna 5 C ni vizuri ku, ku, ni lazima kuoa hizi 5 C. Na kuna 5 C ni uzitaliki. Kwa sababu sio nzuri. Tuanze na zipi? Za kutaliki ama za kuoa? Tuanze za kuoa. <laughs> Aya, sawa. Za kuoa ni zile nilizosema ya kwanza unajifundisha ku communicate, learn to affect people with your words, particularly your students. The second C is the C of creativity. The third C the C of critical thinking. The fourth C is the C of collaboration and the fifth C is the C of consistency. Ukiamua kufanya jambo fanya mpaka ulimalize. Usiliache katikati. Hebu nikumbusheni nimesema C ngapi? Tano za kuoa, si ndio? C ya kwanza Very good. C ya pili? C ya tatu C ya nne Na C ya tano Consistency njia inayopitiwa kila siku wa imei nyasi. Wanasema if you want to be an expert in anything, make sure you do what you do every day and finally you become an expert. Just do it. Do it. Do it every day. Every day repeat it. Repeat it. And finally you become an expert because everybody was one time a learner. Nobody was born a professor. No one was born an expert. But they decided to do what they are doing regularly every day consistently and now they are called experts of politics, experts of sociology, expert kwa sababu wana walifanya walifanya kila siku. So so consistency is consistency. Ah uh, tuangalie za kutaliki. Ready? Complaining and complaining to the wrong person. Si ya kutaliki ya kwanza complain. Si ya kutaliki ya pili ku criticize. Kila kitu. Si ya kutaliki ya tatu condemning. Si ya kutaliki ya nne comparing. Si ya kutaliki ya tano contradicting. Hizo ndizo si za kutaliki. Kama unataka mtu akuwa karne ya ishirini na moja si tano za kuoa na si tano za za kutaliki. Sasa mtaala mpya, yani the CBC is asking us to go for the skills and approaches of 21st century learning, which is basically zile C's ambazo zinafaa kukubalika katika jamii. Collaboration, creativity, consistency, critical thinking and then communication. Ndugu zangu, this curriculum is a conceptual based curriculum. Conceptual based Yaani ni kitu ambacho kinatengeneza fikra. Kinatengeneza fikra. Kila jambo ni fikra. Nimesema hapo awali, kuwa mwangalifu na fikra zako kwa sababu fikra zako zinaathiri hisia zako. Kuwa mwangalifu na hisia zako. Hisia zako zinajenga vitendo vyako. Kuwa mwangalifu na vitendo vyako. Vitendo vyako hukupa tabia zako kuwa mwangalifu na tabia zako kwa sababu tabia zako ndio zinakupeleka mwisho wako so when you say it's a concept based learning ni kwamba the work ambayo inatengeneza hii curriculum ni kujenga fikra ili watu wawe wanapelekwa na fikra positive sio negative fikra 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 Fikra. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Fikra, yani it's, it's about ideas. Everything begins with the the idea. The, so if you are bankrupt when it comes to ideas, my friend, you cannot go anywhere. Where you are bankrupt, fukara wa fikra. How do you do your actions? Kwa hivyo nakuta ni muhimu sana katika mtaala huu kwamba and that's why we look at the assessment letter everything is project based there is no th- much theories everything is about practice because our practice makes what ah you guys are liars ah. who told you practice makes perfect nani alisema mwalimu wako kiingereza wewe jamaa alikudanganya there's no perfection in humanity You can never be perfect. You can become better and better until you are in your grave. Practice makes improvement. Improvement. You will never you can't stop learning until you die inside your grave. From the womb to the tomb in between 
is the period of enlightenment. Hakuna perfection katika mwanadamu. Mungu peke yake ndio yuko perfect. Si ndio? Kwa hivyo binadamu you improve, you improve. You can all, there is always a room for improvement. Always no matter how old you are. There is always something new you can do to become a better person. Kwa hivyo ukifanya practice ya jambo unajiboresha, unajiboresha na mwishowe mwisho una unafika unakuwa mtu ambaye unastahili kufika. That's competency based. Yaani ina, inabadilisha fikra zetu na tunakuwa ni watu ambao tunazalisha tunazalisha By the way do you know now Kenya is defined globally as a consumer nation Look at what you are wearing today Everything you have with you which one is made of Kenya made, made in Kenya which one which one which one Tell me even the pen simple pen and people are studying a lot of chemistry and they cannot even make pen Just, just just look they can make textile and they're doing a lot of textile chemistry i don't know what they call it every every day we are studying new things new things but we we buy everything why do you think so our curriculum is consumer based curriculum is not innovation is not innovative curriculum it is not a curriculum that builds creativity ajengi fikra ajengi fikra ajengi fikra na ndio maana ni rahisi sana kununua wa kenya very easy Very easy. Yule yule mwivi alikuibia pesa yako ya helbi ya shule. Huyo huyo ndio unampigia kura. Mjinga wewe. You know what I'm talking about? The same person who made your life difficult in campus when he was a minister of education. Is the same person you are voting for. The same person who came up with a policy leo unakatwa mshahara ya helbi. Then the same person you are voting that person. Na alikuchukulia helbi money yako yote. Yote hiyo. Kwa sababu hakuna Hakuna fikra, hakuna fikra. Yaani we are tunapeleka tu na, 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 na trend, it's trending, it's trending, it's trending, it's trending. Unaona mwanafunzi ameanza kukata certain hairstyle, anambia ah, kwa nini umefukata hivyo? It's the trend. Ah, what do you mean tra- it's a trend? Mbona umevaa suruali namna hiyo makalio yanaonekana? It's trend. Hey, so you just do because it's trend. Yes. Mbona umefanya hivi? It's trend. Mbona umetoboa mdomo ukaiga? It's trend. Are you getting my point? Mbona umesoka kama msichana ni trend. Don't you think something is wrong with our education? That's why they say it's important to be concept based learning. Ili kubadilisha fikra. Life is about ideas. And that's why the people are becoming millionaires. They don't sell tomatoes and mangoes, they're selling ideas. What they sell is ideas. They sell ideas to pharmaceutical companies. They sell ideas to computer companies they're selling ideas to educational institutions they sell i have a friend of mine who was given an honorary professor two weeks ago because he sold an idea to a western university and they said because you were able to think of that idea you are now at the position of professor and he's only got master's degree he's now a professor so and so without phd idea yeah there are people who are professors without phds by the way there are people who are professors with only one degree only one bachelor peke yake but because they have ideas They have sold ideas and those ideas have been adopted ac- accepted respected and universities offer them because professor is not about studying you know is the university saying now you can be called a professor they call you a professor is no examination no it's just what, how much you have contributed in the development of of the nation or the society whatever so ideas this curriculum as they claim is concept based is supposed to generate ideas and ndio maana there'll be no teaching in the classroom of cbc What will happen in the CBC classroom is learning will take place. The learner and the teacher will both learn from each other. Why? Because it is digital. It is digital. That's why in Canada today the teacher of history can teach physics. Because it is just about putting that arrow at the computer and saying read this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I hope it will not reach here because many people will lose their jobs. Because you need only one one teacher per class to teach all the subjects because all the subjects are in digitalized. You don't need teachers anymore because now teachers are being recorded. Digital learning, you don't have to abu rena screen a topic, the students will learn without a teacher. Simple like that. It's digital, which is very dangerous, don't you think so? To some extent. I don't think we are ready for that. Are we ready for that? Can you imagine minus teachers in this country how many people will be jobless many people isn't it yeah 
but of course gradually tunaenda tunaenda huko it is concept based watu watakuwa nazalisha fikra now what are the values the pillars of BC, the cbc yani ni kitu gani inazuia inazuia in, in, in ecbc kwanza is drawn from the constitution and national goals of education but you can't challenge it in the court of law it is based on our constitution unless we change the constitution and we 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 redefine our goals of education but as long as the constitution remains the same and the goals of education remains the same cbc has an upper hand alafu adapt a whole school approach yani inamjenga mtoto kiukamilifu holistic development alafu it focuses on the three dimensions of learning unlike 844 formal non formal and informal inatizama kule mtoto kusoma kutoka kwa mwalimu mtoto kutoka kwa mtoto mwenzake mtoto kusoma kutoka katika mazingira na katika ile computer na hii ndio hatari wewe kiwa mwalimu mvivu ndio ameenda kumuuliza Sheikh Google maswali mengi mufti ya huu maswali mengi alafu anakuja darasani na wewe unajidai unajua sana anakupiga mabomu anasema hivi na hivi na hivi na hivi wewe ujaenda huko ya shaenda wewe umebaki huko ya shafika maili kumi mbele yako that's the problem of digital learning students who are hard working are always ahead of the of the teacher the, the teachers have to keep the pace kwa sababu wanasoma mambo mingi sana wewe unakuja ukifikiri umejitayarisha hapo unaanza kupiga mekelele yako kama dr mujahid hapo mtoto anakuangalia taliangalia ile zuzu la 80 eh hiyo tushasikia tayari tumeshikia katika youtube shekh fulani amesema tumesoma katika twitter mtu fulani amesema tumesoma katika whatever tumesoma kwa telegram tumeona kwa whatsapp group so learning is real the dynamics are changing and therefore we must also change kama kama walimu alafu cbc has the following vision because anything that that, that 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 does not have vision it perishes ndio kwa hivyo cbc in a vision in our father the vision is it is engaged empowered and ethical citizen kwamba baada ya mtoto amepitia ile cbc yote kuanzia pp mpaka senior secondary school atakuwa engaged empowered and akuwa ethical take the word ethical citizen remember the moral competencies we talked about ethical citizen hata uza nchi yake akipewa pesa kujenga damu atajenga hata kula alafu watu wakufe na kiu atajenga si ndio akipewa pesa ya kununua zile sanitary pads za wasichana wa West Pokot atanunua hata waacha wale wasichana watoke shuleni atanunua akipewa pesa ya corona kununua masks eh eh na na instruments za kupima atanunua hata kula ethical sijui kama unanifahm eh kwa hivyo hii hii reform is a very big reform is a very big agenda it's not just it's about Kenya and life in general it's about empowering us and then the mission is nurturing every learner's potential we are different we can't all be the same sawa sawa sasa unamkubalia mtoto awe vile anavyo stahili kuwa kama yeye mikono yake ni ya kuponya basi awe daktari kama ulimi wake ni wa kuliwaza awe mwalimu si ndio eh ikiwa eh na kama yani mtu awe vile alivyoombwa it is wrong to judge a fish by climbing a tree the fish will get zero every day si ndio and it is very wrong eh kumjudge nani elephant alafu unampeleka afanye swimming alafu anafanya competition ya swimming elephant no possible impossible ni, ni, ni haiwezekani kumfanya you know nyoka aruke anaeruka ni ndege so what they say is that nature every learners but na ndio maana wakifika junior secondary they will have three pathways tutaangalia hiyo watakuwa hawa watasoma masomo pamoja Eh? kwa hivyo kuanzia junior secondary they have three different classroom wale wa uh, science and technology wanaingia darasa yao wanafundishwa mambo ya science na technology wale hawataki hiyo wanataka mambo ya sports na games wataingia darasa la kufundishwa games sports whatever wale hawataki hiyo watafundishwa mambo ya kijamii wataingia huko social sciences Are you, are you getting my point? So utakuta katika shule moja junior secondary form 1 lakini kuna form 1 tatu form 1 stem form 1 games form 1 social science Asa the kids will choose. Si lazima ufanye chemistry kama hujui. 
Wenda ufanye mambo mengine huko. Sawa so, sawa? So, eh? Yeah. So it, it will now the, the selection the choices will begin very early in life eh ndoto anaanguka kwa sababu umefanya chemistry compulsory na yeye hajui chemistry na hana haja ya kukua daktari hataki hiyo chemistry hataki kufanya mambo ya chemistry lakini unamlazimisha sasa hii CBC inasema ah kuna kulazimishana mtu anafanya kile anaka nataka kufanya ya nini kunaambia mimi nisome hesabu mimi nataka Kiarabu na, na dini sasa hiyo hesabu niende nayo wapi wacha niingie hii darasa la la social sciences nifanye history ayari arabic hapo starehe tupu hapo hakuna stress sawa sawa sasa unachagua si ndio yeah that's what they call nature every learner potential sisi so sisi hiyo sote tunaweza kuwa madaktari sio sote tunaweza kuwa engineer kila mtu ana ana ujuzi wake na kila mtu ana mapendeleo yake okay remember in 1963 we had the system of 7423 system which was seven years of primary education, four years of secondary, two years of upper secondary. That's the system we went through. We went up to form six. Okay? You guys, most of you, went through the other system, the system of eight for four, which was introduced in 1985. So, so, it had the same, the same concept, by the way. The philosophy of eight for four is the same, is synonymous to the philosophy of CBC. Mzee Moi wanted to make sure it's not only one trap that goes to university. Mzee Moi wanted to do that. And Mzee Moi wanted to make sure that everybody is useful in the society. But people who implemented it made so many errors. Just like the way they're doing it with CBC. Somewhere, somehow, I'm sure it's going to fail. Because of poor implementation strategy. Because when you go to private schools at the moment, they're busy doing CBC. But when you go to public school, nobody does CBC. How do you do CBC with 100 kids in a class? How? CBC is about individualized learning. Individualized learning. As a huyu mali mmoja, ana watoto mia moja majenjeni second primary school. Uko majenjeni primary school. Ana walimu, ana watoto mia moja kwa darasa. Ata, ata shika upi, ata mwacha yu. Impossible, sindio? That's where we will go wrong somehow. So there's a lot of CBC going on in private schools. Kwa sababu wanaongopa, wanaogopa wizara. Hata wawo wanafanya tu lakina wataki. Lakini wanaogopa wasijia kamba mutafungiwa shule. Wanafanya. Lakini kule kwa public, hmm, 844. Inaendele. My, one, one head teacher was telling me, ako na wanafunzi miatano na stini kwa darasa moja. Yani kama class 3 hivi. Alafu wanatakikana, a, a key in his assessment zao max kwa hiyo neck portal. Anasema ni kianze na ataka miezi miwili ndio ni malize. Kabla si malize hiyo assessment ingine mechafika. When do I do it? So what do I do? I just keep them max. No assessment. Just do it. See the danger? So anasema individuals, the actual implementation ambayo itakuwa ndiyo shida kubwa sana. We look at the challenges later. Now the new system that is 2018 which is CBC. Okay? That is still now, we, they are going to do their final exam, the grade 6. Grade 6 is going to do exam in November. So this year we are going to have three national exams. Grade 6, class 8, and form 4. Grade 6 ready to go to form 1, junior secondary. And class, F, uh, class 8 going to form 1 in secondary school. So it's really going to be a bit tricky for many schools. But that's how the system is supposed to work. And in your manner, we have to prepare ourselves. So the gaps is, unfortunately, when the research was done, these were the gaps. Ambao zilionikana, na zikaona ni lazima tuwe na mtaala ama manhaj mpia, ama tuwe na curriculum mpia. What are the gaps? Gap number one. An influx of white collar job trainings over time created skills imbalances in the job market. Eh, kila mtu anataka kukaa ofisi, eh? Hakuna nataka kufanya zile old job, eh? Spanner jobs. Okay? Kwa hivyo nakuta there are a lot of vacancies in the technical world, but there are no people to do that. Kila mtu hako na ilimu ya darasani peke yake. Hakuna ilimu ya workshop. Kwa hivyo mambo ya workshop ya nakufa. They ignited the desire by the government to include technical vocational training. Kwa sababu ya 2030 vision. Okay? Can you imagine, eh? <laughs> You're like this. I have a little boy called Imad. So, siku ingine, ameshikuwa na kichwa kina muma sana. Sasa, nikamambia, nita kupele kwa hospitali, lakini wacha ni nini. Akasama, ah, we watu na kuita doktor, hata uwezi kutibu hata kichwa. <laughs> sasa, doktor gani wewe sasa? Nasikia watu, nasikia watu na kuita doktor, doktor, doktor. Na mi kichwa kina muma, wana nambewa na enda kutafuta doktor mungini. Sasa, hii doktor ni ya nini? <laughs> si, doktor hiyo inakua, inakua mbaya sana. So, it's, it's important, kumba, and at the end of the day, kumba, 
people have to diversify ili kwamba kuwe na appropriate skills required in the in the society alafu unakuta roughly kenyans require 30000 technologists they are not there 90000 technicians they are not there 400000 craftsmen they are not there so you can see the juakali sector and the sector that is supposed to propel industrialization lacks manpower now with the cbc and you unakuta don't quote me you unakuta squeezy i want you to take a moment and see and and and, and discover this majority of kcsc candidates score between c and d plus the biggest number how many were c plus and above this year 100 and 80 something so no how many were d plus between d plus and c plain more than half of the candidates who did the exam were here why because the ministry wants to make sure everybody goes to tvet technical vocational education training institute when you have a c plus you have a degree disease sindio diploma disease you want a degree with c plus ijapokuwa kuna wengine they still go for tvet with c plus b minus there are some courses in tvet that are more marketable than the degree courses at the universities there are more prospects okay and therefore some people oh even if when they get a minus they can still go there because of those areas so nakuta this is a deliberate effort so instead of uh, playing games let's do it through cbc ili mtu tupate watu ambao wanatakikana na inchi ili tujenge uchumi wetu kwa hivyo the phasing is two years of preschool six years of primary school six years of high school and three years of tertiary institution kwamba kule mbele tutapokwenda ni wangapi wetu tumesoma tu kama degree na diploma lakini hata bulb hatuwezi kubadilisha nyumbani Radio yako kiharibika tu kidogo pengine ni waya tu unataka unganishe unapiga fundi Simu yako pengine tu inataka tu fundi Kiatu yako imekatika tu kidogo hata kushona ujui uh, uh, Do you get what, what I'm talking about So CBC is about life skills yani kujenga watu wawe na ujuzi wa kuishi bila ya, ku, ya kuwa na shida nyingi sana katika 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 maisha yao. Alafu pia serikali inataka kuondoa this examination malpractices, elimination of summative evaluation and instead promote formative continuous evaluation. Kwa sababu hawa watoto wa CBC watapata mtihani wa kitaifa wakiwa darasa la tatu kuna kuwa na national assessment, alafu kuna kuwa na national assessment wakiwa darasa la da sita alafu kutakuwa na national assessment kukiwa na darasa la la, la form 2 la form la yeah uh, third year of junior secondary school and then the final one okay so that means lakini ile mitihani watakayofanya haitakuwa ndio yenye kuamua grade gani watapewa a uh-huh. watakuwa na zile pia continue, kama vile university tuko na cut kuna na final exam sasa hii system pia itakuwa na cut system na final exam kwamba mwalimu atakuwa tutaangalia assessment baadaye mwalimu atakuwa anamwangalia maendeleo ya yule mtoto kuanzia aanze shule mpaka atakapofanya mtihani alafu atakuwa na 30% atachukua ile 30% ataiongeza katika ile marks ya final exam na mtoto atakuwa ameweza kupita kwa hivyo itakuwa hakuna haja ya kudanganya tena katika mitihani watu watakuwa wanapita kiura kiurahisi Asa, kwa hivyo elimination of summative evaluation in the new curriculum this refers to exam that were normally done with 844 system and people were always finding every possible means to pass those exams and some of them pass and they still become useless in their life students should be, be, be assessed based on their competencies meaning their ability to apply knowledge and skills in performing their day to day activity and then formative ya ile ya ku, kuanzia mwanzo na na mwisho alafu baadaye unaamua huyu mtoto yuko yuko level gani eh? uh, another thing that is very unique ambayo katika 844 haikuwa na katika CBC ipo ni kwamba parental and community involvement wangapi hapa wana wazazi ni wazazi na wana watoto uh, primary CBC eh bonyesha mkono kama uko na mtoto primary school How interesting is it madam Mara leo mabeseni mara kesho mwa mwa ma, ma, eh? fagio eh? mara matengeneza apron scarecrow fasted kit doing so much yani mzazi apende sipende lazima asome pamoja na 
na mtoto na ndio maana wazazi they really want this system to fail and that's why the opposition the uda is saying if it gets the government it will abolish because they know many parents don't want this system si ndio yes that's why the uda is saying vote for us our government will abolish cbc si nana yuko uda hapa yeah oh jama hivyo ndio mnasema ama Ah. Again says eh Magoka juzi alisema we are not introducing we are we are midwifing the CBC. No one will be able to to stop CBC. Kwa sababu tumefika mbali sana. So that's that's the issue. At the end of the day ni kuhakikisha kwamba mzazi amejihusisha katika masomo ya mtoto wake. It's very important. Uh, parental involvement uh, and 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 the idea is that there was a research that was done it's called APHRC research you can google it if you want to read more in asema research has documented that the school is just one place where the teaching of life skills occur in the home and family setting parents shapes the attitude skills and values that young people acquire the project improving learning outcome and transition to secondary school showed that communication between parents and their children improves the learning outcome kwa hiyo hii research ndio ilipeana nguvu ya kwamba ni lazima wazazi wa wahusishwe. More research shows that parental communication with a child of the opposite gender, daughter to father, son to mother, strengthen their emotional ability. They don't fall in love too quickly. Because they know if the daughter loves the dad and the dad loves the daughter, the daughter doesn't look for love for, from strangers. When the son loves the mother and the mother loves the son, the son will not look for love from strangers because they have the mother love. They have the father's love. So if there is bond between daughters and fathers and then mothers and sons, ile early pregnancy doesn't occur in the society. That's why CBC is emphasizing on parental involvement katika education. Alafu wanasema the new curriculum therefore offers parents the opportunity to be involved in their children's education, which is very difficult in Kenya, si ndio? Hapa Burera mkita mkutano wa wazazi nani anakuja Mama baba akuje si ndio eh, CBC baba ako busy kila siku uh, uh, CBC says no both parents must be must be involved and therefore also this curriculum is important because we have to embrace change okay curriculum change is a learning process for teachers and their schools since conditions in the world are changing greatly Ulimwengu unabadilika si ndio becoming a global village what do you think will happen to your grandfather aki, akifufuka kutoka kwenye kaburi alafu akuone wewe unazungumza na simu na mtu yuko Canada na unamuona na yeye anakuona what do you think will happen At, uh, he will run back to the grave huh? atakufa tena mara ya pili au mara ya tatu si ndio siku moja i was walking around with my mama hasa all of a sudden akasema yeye anataka kula chocolate eh na mimi sijabeba pesa sasa tufanye nini? Ah nikakumbuka katika gari iko ATM card. Sasa nikaenda kwa gari nikachukua ATM card. I didn't know my mother alikuwa ananiangalia. Nikaenda kwa ile ATM card, nikatia ile card, si ndio? Pesa ikatoka. Nikija anambia, "Eh, eh, eh, eh ulimwengu umekwisha." Senti, kutoka kwenye ukucha. Ah! Ulimwengu umekwisha. Senti kwenye ukucha. Ah! Njume, njume, njume. Haja mama Maxile, eh, njume, njume, njume. Senti kwenye ukucha. Okay, so kwenye ukucha. Sasa <laughs> inaje, eh? Things are a changing. Okay, changing. So with, with with that mentality, we also have to we have to change transforming education system one that better engages students and in their own in their own learning instead of being consumers and crammers but generate their own their own knowledge one focus for their transformation curriculum that enables sports children to choose what they want to do physically so that they can grow also physically curriculum change remember at the end of the day as we move the world is becoming digital everything is digitalized okay you can remember uh, not far back during the corona you guys were teaching online isn't it and still watoto walikuwa nasoma si ndio yeah there are some countries we have or which have online schools people don't go to school anymore wanafunza waendi tena shule wanasoma wakiwa wakiwa nyumbani okay that means there is collapse of uh, what you call structured school institutions because everything is now being digitalized haijafika hapa lakini itafika si ndio yes kutakuwa time itakuwa ni optional 
Ndoto ata decide kukaa nyumbani kusoma which is happening in Nairobi actually. There are some kids who are doing homeschooling. They're just learning on online. Awaindi tena mashule. A number of international schools have closed down in Nairobi because there are no students. Students are learning at home with online tutors. They are taking programs from abroad and they are in in Kenya. But they're not going to international schools in Nairobi and up country like Nakuru and so on and so forth. They are learning at home with teachers from Canada, teachers from UK, teachers from China and so forth and so forth. So this curriculum wants us to be compatible na yale mabadiliko yanayopatikana katika katika ulimwengu. Again the program ambayo ni CBC it is individualized learning individualized learning yani ukiwa na watoto 30 katika darasa unafundisha kila mmoja kama vile alivyo kulingana na uwezo wake kulingana na interest yake na ndio maana CBC classes should never be more than 20 20 kids if it is to be done very very effectively the number in fact they are recommending should go down to 15 for whatever secondary school level to about 25 in the primary school level to about 10 in the nursery school level where now kids really want that individual attention kwa hiyo hiyo ni reforms ambazo lazima tutafanya ili kuhakikisha kwamba mfumo ume umebadilika sawa sawa what is the difference between 844 and CBC Katika 844 there was a lot of rigid and prescriptive curriculum with immediate with limited flexibility the curriculum was very rigid lakini with CBC focus is on is on competencies auangalie content na angalia learning outcome hata uki assess how assess content una assess competencies Unaangalia competency. Kwa mfano, haumuulizi mtoto akwambie step za kuperform udhu. Ah, unamwangalia akiperform ule udhu. Now you, you grade based on that. Ya unaangalia, uangalie kwa mfano wewe mwalimu wa dini umuulizi mtoto uh, farazi part of sala. Ah, unaangalia anapoperform ile sala. Tayammam na kadhalika. Sasa so, inakuwa competent. Unaangalia, umefundisha mtu jinsi ya kutengeneza rafiki vizuri. You don't you don't ask them, can you write down the 10 condition of 10 10 uh, whatever factors that can make you a good friend no no you look at how many friends that person has so it's called a competency uh, focus rigid and uh, what you call primarily focused on summative assessment and competency lakini kwa cbc it balances formative uh, summative assessment and excellency emphasis on schooling emphasis on education okay and then emphasis on teaching and the other one is emphasis on on learning don't worry we we'll soon finish this one okay again cbc calls for a flexible learning environment and that's why even according to the policies of the ministry of education class sizes yeah cbc is different from the 844 class sizes because it's supposed to have workstations and if the class is small those workstations will never be there there's supposed to be about three four types of labs for CBC unlike at for four you only had two physics and biology lab here you'll have electron, electronic lab you'll have home science lab you have agricultural lab so many other labs working rooms and such kind of thing so you find most learning will be in those working rooms and it will never be in the in the classroom again remember it is ICT based and that's why one of the compulsory subject is on ICT digital learning Okay so it is going to be a little complicated. So the methods that are used in teaching this CBC are basically what they call inquiry and question based approaches. Inquiries and question based. You can google this and you will learn a lot about this method. The method of inquiry and question based approach. This includes project based learning, problem based learning, self assessment, research skills and scientific methods. Hizi ndizo mbinu hii habari inafanya lecture ya discuss there will be no more of that. There will be basically you know self induced methods of learning. Yaani wanafunzi wenyewe wanasoma. What you need to do is to provide resources. Alafu wenyewe watakuwa wana so it's going to ha- have what we call active learning approaches active learning approaches okay or what they call the pbl project based learning project based learning those are the methods that they're going to use or they're going to use what you call uh, learning uh, pro- uh, project learning and action approach different types of method ambazo they have to be applied for cbc to be 
effective. It's not like 844, where it was mainly question and answer, lecture, discussions, you know, what you call explanation. Here is about more of learning than teaching, more of doing than talking. This is CBC. So collaboration with the community, one of the area ambayo itakuwa assess is community service. Yani it, it will form part of the grade ya yule manafunzi. Kwa hivyo kutakuwa wakati watakuwa wanaenda hospitali, wanaenda sokoni kusafisha, wanaenda mitaani kuokotataka. They have to get close to their communities. They have to take care of the environment. Na hiyo pia itakuwa ni marks watakaopewa ambayo itakuwa katika final exam. Kwa hivyo itakuwa kuna this is something very unique with competence based that there will be collaboration with community. Yani, you will never acquire, you will never be given a certificate unless you have marks on community service. Minus marks on community service, you will, it's like teaching. You'll never get graded without teaching practice. And you'll never get graded in CBC without community, community service. So that's another thing. What are the principles of learning and nurturing in this curriculum? That is curriculum-based learning. is Become familiar with school and board authority policies for involving guest instructors in the classroom. That means there will be a lot of rotation. Okay, There will be a lot of team teaching. There'll be a lot of use in terms of resource personnel. Okay? Arrange for a meeting to discuss appropriate learning approach. At the end of the day, for teachers to be continuously empowered. Because eh? kila kila siku. By the way, if you don't learn a new thing in a year, your knowledge is stale. Because everything, kila kitu kina, kina badlika. Awezi. Eh, ile fikhi, watu wali usoma miaka stini siyo fikhi. Ambayo inafanya kazi leo, sindio? Ifiki tofauti sana. Mambo inabadilika kila wakati. Kwa ba uwezi kusema mi sasa na degree nimefika. Uh -uh. You have to do continuous learning. Uwe mwenyewe alafu pia wanafunzi uwe unasaidia. Ensure that age appropriate material is used. Kwa ba wale wanafunzi wanapewa vifa. Vinaulingana na umri na umri wao. Determine the needs. Kwa ba kila moja ana mahitaji yake. Kwa ba utakuenda kulingana na mahitaji ya wale wanafunzi kama nilivyosema awali haufundishi darasa unafundisha kila mtu binafsi kila mtu peke yake very very important and then it is also recommended in this curriculum kwamba there should be special support kwa wale wanafunzi ambao watakuwa ni slow learners wale wanafunzi wanakuwa na emotional instabilities wale wanafunzi ambao wanatoka broken homes they have problems wanafunzi ambao ni orphans wanafunzi they'll be a what you call the psychosocial support system katika kila school one of the condition of cbc every school must have a qualified competent counselor and a career advisor teachers plus counselor plus career advisor because they start very early in terms of selecting career path career pathways Again, remember, the programs will always be modified. That means there will be a lot of flexibility. Kulingana na mazingira, vile anavo, anavo kuenda. Unlike 844. Unakuta, the same things are taught every, every year. And then there will be what they call inclusive learning or total learning. That means a relationship between maths and science, relationship between science and social studies. Whoever is teaching religion, teaching social studies can integrate some concept. Ili we present it in a wholesome way. Education through this system will never be compartmentalized anymore. It will be fully integrated, not only religiously, but in terms of other subjects as well, kama isabu, physics, chemistry. Ili wanafunzi wasome in different avenue, na wapati competencies. Alafu kutakuwa na inclusion and equality, no discrimination. Every child will be given an opportunity to learn, like children with special needs, or children with difficulties in learning, or children from marginalized community, children who are struggling with whatever competencies that they want to acquire, and girls and boys will be given the same opportunity to grow and become people of their own choices. So this is another interesting thing about the competence-based curriculum learning. Again, it's important to understand Kumba, every school based on this curriculum will have a profession, professional development unit which will be responsible for research in updating teachers on how things should be done and how things should be changed. Very, very important. Because Babu, as you teach, as a teacher, you need support from an expert of different instructional and pedagogical areas. As iyo itakuwa ni requirement katika mashule. In conclusion, I say the success, uh, CBC for student success is through personalized learning, 
flexible learning environment, ICT enabled learning environment, inquiry and question based approach, collaboration with parents and community, and supporting diverse learners, inclusion and equality, differentiated instruction. These are the major components there C, B, C. Any question? Otherwise, we take a break. Okay, uh, Swali ama kitu cha kuongeza pia fikra yote ambayo unafikiri itatufaidisha zote. Uh, let's look at uh, Let's finish this part and then we just go. Since we are going to about junior so secondary. We are junior secondary, then we have to know how the structure how it is here. Uh, the computer. I'm going to turn it to me. I see you. I see you. I Ah, okay, so, sorry. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, this diagram will also help us in terms of understanding uh, how, how things will be the structure of the CBC. As you can see, the, the, the lower level is called early years education which is pre-primary and lower primary, PP1, PP2, and then the grade one, grade two, and then grade three. Then we go to the middle school level, which is basically made up of upper primary and lower secondary school. When we go to the junior secondary school, there'll be three types of, three types, three types of learning. Now, one will be STEM, this is science and technology, and whatever and then the social sciences and then arts and and sports okay and then now you go to the tertiary education what is important is for us to look at those uh, the junior center Okay. So uh, the junior secondary is a phase of education in secondary school, uh, year 7, 8 and 9, which helps to ensure the bridge between primary and secondary school is safe. I am sure you are aware that there are a lot of complications, squeezy. Because there is a transition, there is a preparation to class 8 to high school. And that's why we have so many discipline problems in high school. Kwa sababu mtoto ametoka katika primary school ambao kila kitu anapewa, anapewa, anapewa. Na mtihani ni ku tik 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 tik. Alafu all of a sudden anakuja high school, anasoma chemistry, biology, physics, math and ke notes and ke zone. There's no transition. And that's why there is a break between primary and secondary. And this middle level is called junior secondary school. That's why they say junior secondary is phase of education in state secondary school for year seven, eight, and nine. These are pre-adolescent years before they get into the adolescent year in the senior secondary school. Kuapika ili kusudi wakifika secondary school wasi pata zile shocks ambazo wanafunzi wanapata hivi sasa. Primary ya kufundisho kwa andika notes zake mwenye, primary ya kufundisho kufanya research, sasa amengia form 1, kila mtu anampatia assignment, anachanga nyikiwa. Asa, this is supposed to prepare them. Junior secondary will focus on age appropriate education and support for students, well-being and transition. Kutoka primary kuenda senior secondary. So junior secondary is an incubation stage. Ambayo ile pre-adolescence itakuwa manage ili mtoto akiingia katika adolescence asiwe na complexity nyingi sana za kisaikolojia. Ah yes, we are going there. Okay? We are going there. Okay? So at present TSC is deploying primary school teachers with bachelor's degrees to go and teach in junior secondary school. Okay? Uh, 
about, uh, what I say is that to be posted to teach in secondary school, a teacher must have obtained average grade, at least C plus, in KCC in two teaching subjects. So kisikila moja atakubaliwa kufundisha junior secondary school. A primary school teacher who has a degree and also has a C plus in the subject that they want to teach will be allowed to teach in junior secondary school. In the first year group, in key stage three, in which the secondary national curriculum is taught and marks the beginning of second, the year seven follows year six, the last year of primary education. That means a, a smooth transition, imekuwa ensured. Ili kusudi uyu mtoto asikuwe mixed up academically, socially and intellectually. Secondary education is now divided into general two sections. The, the, what we call the general education and vocational education. Kwamba si lazima kila mwanafunzi aende general secondary, general junior secondary. Some of them will go to vocational. Remember kuna three categories eh? ambazo tuziangalia zile subjects zake. Junior secondary education will take three years, grade 7, 8 and 9. For learners age between 12 and 14. There will be 12 compulsory subjects in junior secondary, some of which have been retained from the 844 system. Kwa hivyo watakuwa na masomo kumi na mbili. Sa hizi for mwana wakona masomo mangaka. Kabla hawaja select, inakuwa kumi. Around 10. Alafu wana select na nabakisha nane. Maximum and saba. Sindio? Sasa hapa wanakuwa na kumi na mbili. Watasoma kumi na mbili. Okay? Okay. Remember, by next year, when these people are going, we will have 1.224 million pioneers of uh, curriculum-based learning. Ambao atenda junior secondary. Last, next year. Wale atamaliza class 6, there are about 1.24 million. Wanaenda uko. It's, it's really, uh, ambao they will join secondary school in 2023. The academic calendar will revert by next year to a normal situation. Tutakua tunanza January. Information, communication, technology will be a key delivery tool for all the, the subjects. Delivery. The nature of what learners will study at this level is still being debated. Huh? Still, still, though they are preparing, but still there's so many questions unanswered. So many questions unanswered. Because we were complaining about the load in 844, now we have a bigger load in the CBC. Bigger, bigger load. There will be a total, I said, of 12 core subjects, okay? These are English, Kiswahili, Mathematics, and Social Studies. For learners with hearing impairment, they will undertake Kenya Sign Languages in place of English and Kiswahili, including Compositions and, and Insha. Religious education has also been retained as a core subject. Learner will choose whether to study Christianity, Islam, or Hindu religious education. Business Studies, Agriculture, Life skills education, sports and physical education will also be studied as core subjects, not optional. Core subjects in junior secondary. Okay? It's not optional. Okay? New subjects that have been introduced as core subjects in the junior secondary are integrated science. They'll not be biology, chemistry, biology, physics. Uh -uh. It will be integrated like the general science people used to do before. It is integrated. Both chemistry, biology, physics, pamoja, called science. Integrated science. And then they will also do health education and pre-technical and pre-career education. These are new subjects that are being introduced. As compulsory. As compulsory. Not optional. These are new subjects. This is integrated science, health education, pre-technical and pre-career as compulsory. The key purpose of the pre-technical subject is to prepare learners for work by instilling technical skills and knowledge needed to perform specific skills. Okay? Uh, others are woodwork. These are now optional. Eh? Woodwork, shorthand, typewriting, technical drawing, network, electricity, and electronics. These will be optional. They will choose two maximum and one minimum. So they take either one, Minimum. We must take one. Otherwise, you can also take take two out of these ones. Okay. Uh, technical skills are important for several reasons. They help learners work more efficiently, boost their confidence, and make them more valuable candidates for employers. On the other hand, pre-career education, which is also compulsory, will seek to prepare learners to pick out their career paths on completion of junior secondary school. Great. And on completion of the senior, grade 10, 11, and 12. So they'll be prepared in junior, so that when they go to senior, they know exactly what they want to do. 
Sawa so, sawa. So, Sio hapa tunawaambia form 2 wakati wana select hiyo masomo one day seminar or two day seminar aya they go. No, this will be a whole subject. Kumfanya mwanafunzi ajue yeye what is he good at? What is it that he can do and become successful in life? Medicine, engineering or whatever, architect whatever. It will be a full course preparing on career, you know? choices career selection ili akifika senior secondary as the, the 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 focus is refined you know there's so many people who go to university and regret why they're doing what they're doing because they never really thought about it mtu amekuwa daktari mpaka me graduate just to realize he didn't want to become a doctor mtu amekuwa engineer mpaka me graduate ah sikutaka kuwa engineer unakuwa mwalimu mpaka una graduate and say ah miss hata sikutaka kuwa mwalimu si ndio bahati mbaya tu hii imekuja sasa inakuwa shida sasa but after going through the career you know skills training akifika kule yeye yuko tayari psychologically okay even socially to take the career pathway he wants or she wants to take again remember career education hones their focus so that they can make informed choices about their careers okay again it provides them with the skills knowledge and encouragement they need to get the most out of their desire career career path teachers and counselors will provide the essential guidance that will create a bridge between education and career because now it will be taught as a, a subject usually learners display high levels of engagement and motivation when they have a clear understanding of what they want to become in their lives nini wanataka kufanya again remember uh, optional subjects that are not compulsory These are there are total of seven optional subjects in junior secondary. These are also learners will be allowed to choose minimum of one and maximum of two optional subjects. These are visual arts, performing arts, home science, computer science. These will be optional. Ndoto atachukua mbili ama atachukua minimum moja. There will also be an option for learners to study a foreign language. Options available so far ni German French, Arabic, Chinese and Mandarin. Ki Japanese kijuki hiyo. Because we have good relationship with the East now. Chinese. Huh? Ah, so uh, so it, 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 it's it's uh, it's these are the languages that they will study. Still on language learners will have an option to study indigenous language. Kuna option One optional subject is indigenous language. This can be from Ukamba, Digo, Luya, Ma, Idaho, Somali or Ogiek, whichever language you choose. In junior secondary it will be taught as an optional as an optional subject. Okay? There will be also be optional learners to study the Kenyan sign language if you are interested. You can study Kenyan sign, uh, sign language. So that's it. I think uh, this is just a summary. Junior secondary is part of the middle. So English, these are compulsory. English, Kiswahili or Kenya science language, mathematics, integrated science, health education, pre-technical and pre-education, and so on and so forth. So you to me, part of your concept here, junior secondary? Yeah. So it's going to be completely different eh, from the current uh, Form 1, Form 2 uh, setups. Yeah, and the, the combination of the subjects is also going to be completely different. Uh, hopefully, Uda will take over the government. Karibuni kwa kipindi cha pili. Nataka kuahidi kwamba kipindi hiki kitakuwa more interesting kuliko kile kipindi cha cha kwanza na kitakuwa na faida nyingi zaidi kuliko kile cha cha kwanza na na hakika tuta tutafurahia kama walimu kipindi hiki cha pili tutachanganya mambo mawili uh, lesson preparation and classroom management tutachanganya mambo mawili ili kusudi we kill two birds with one with one stone in the interest of time na haya mambo mawili kawaida huwa yana yanaingiliana kwa sababu good uh, lesson preparation is a uh, requisite for good classroom management if you're not prepared very well There's no way you can manage the class uh, the way it is expected. But it's very very important. Uh, na kwa vile sitaki nizungumze peke yangu sana. Nataka yule mtu ambaye yeye wajifikiria ni expert wa lesson preparation. Yaani amebobea, ame prepare lessons nyingi sana aje kushare experience yake na sisi wote hapa. 
yani yule mtu ambaye anaji let me see how confident people are in this room uh, whether the a to z has done any magic or not eh? who who wants to volunteer who wants to volunteer who who believes that he 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 has what it takes oh thank you very much okay and then i'll give you my summary karibu mwalimu we're going to have about three of them huh? so please after him we'll have another two so we make it participatory make it participatory okay go ahead how, how do you make how do you make a good preparation for a lesson how do you prepare for a lesson before you go to class and teach before you go to class to teach you think about that lesson and then you conceptualize the content you have heard first before you put it down into different portions yes go ahead go ahead well in that no back up cut us when you come to lesson preparation you have the content already and uh, you know time division. time division what to do at the beginning how to start your lesson what is the topic of the day before the topic of the day make a recap of what you taught the previous lesson before you proceed to the present Yes, Nairobi <laughs> 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 There are lesson development and uh, you want to expound on the issues that you have already introduced. There are you going to apportion more time than the introduction. So on that lesson development, you're going to give examples in the sentence uh, in English you write to write sentences of Swahili. Uh, Saruf, you write your sentences down, you get similar sentences from the students, there is uh, engagement with students, there is group discussion, that is the lesson development. After that, you come to the conclusion. Like you've done earlier, you get a summary of what you thought, make a recap again, of the lesson that you've already taught and then you give an exercise if you need to that's all the lesson is uh, even at the conclusion there is time allocation and make sure that uh, you become faithful to that time thank you very much uh, that is a very good input somebody else with a different conceptual framework of lesson preparation different conceptual framework na hakika msha somesha masomo mengi sana kuanzia mwanze kuwa walimu kwa hivyo si jambo geni si ndio ni jambo ambalo tunajaribu uh, kukumbushana ili kusudi tukianza muhula huu tuwe ni wenye uwezo wa kuboresha zile mbinu na nyenzo za kufunza wanafunzi wetu it is not what you teach that is important What is important is how you teach it. Isn't it? What you teach is not really significant. What is significant is how do you teach what you you teach. They also say if you cannot if they cannot understand how you teach them, teach them how they can understand you. This is a very interesting quote of Maria Montessori. If if they cannot understand the way you teach them, teach them the way they understand. Why well, that means the student is the center of your preparation. Let's get another contribution before we sum up and move on. Lesson preparation. Najua sisi wote we've done 
a thousand millions of lesson plans, lesson preparations, and we have attended so many. What, what have you been doing? What is it that you've been doing? Ni kitu gani mmekuwa mkifanya? Kuhakikisha kwamba ile somo yako, somo lako limeeleweka. Learning is never learning until there is a change in behavior, si ndio? Kusoma hakui kusoma mpaka kuwe na mabadiliko ya tabia. Hapo ndio utasema mwanafunzi amesoma. Lakini kusoma bila mabadiliko ya tabia basi kusoma hakuja hakujafanyika bado. Si ndio? Uh, theories mbili as a preparation of lesson. Cognitive theory na behavioral theory. Sigmund Freud asema no kama mwanafunzi aweza ku recall what you said in class learning has taken place. But Skinner says no 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 no. It's not like that. It's not about recalling. It's about applying. It's about applying. Umefundisha adabu. Je, huyu mtoto ana adabu kwa nje kweli? Ama anajua tu kujibu swala la adabu katika mtihani? Eh, umefundisha mazingira na to conserve environment. Is this kid doing that out there? Am it is just for the sake of the exam? Learning is never learning until there is a change in behavior. So preparation of lesson. My dear colleagues, there are three, five S that are very key in life if you want to be a successful person. They are very key in life. Very, very key in life. And if you cannot use them, then you have a problem. Who wants this 1,000? Who wants this 1,000? I'll give to anybody who wants it. Who wants this 1,000? Who wants you this 1,000? Must be very sweet. If you want something, you go for it. Do you want me to bring it where you're seated? You see where the mistake is? Yeah. You should come for it. Oh, you're right. Are, are you getting the concept? Majority of us wait for things to happen. No, no, no. You can't wait for things to happen. You have to make things happen. You have to. You have to make sure you're making things happen. Na hapo ndiyo kusoma kume kumepatikana. Okay, let me give you another example. Uh, uh, this time don't come, I'm just showing you. How, uh, if you want this uh, 1,000, just raise up your hand. How many of you would like this 1,000, Bob? How many of you would want this 1,000? Nane ataka yelfu moji? Nane ataka nimpe yelfu moji? Nane angependa nimpe yelfu moji? Aya, hakuna shida. What about Niki Fanya Ivi? Nane uyo itaka? Nane bado uyo itaka? Bado itaka hivyo hivyo? Je, ni kifanye hivi? Bado unaitaka? Je, ni kwa bado unataka? Bado unataka? Kwa nini unaitaka? Thamani. Thamani hai haibadiliki. Tafuja tena mkoani sio? Ustaz ameonyesha mkono wake mara nyingi sana, sasa nitampe. The thamani will never will never get lost, okay? So what I'm saying is that there are five S's in life that are very important. S ya kwanza, muhim sana, muhim sana kwa mwalimu. S ya kwanza is your self-esteem. How you feel about yourself. How you feel about you. How do you feel about you? We ni mwalimu ama ni kiji mwalimu? Unasomesha ama unajaribu tu kusomesha? How do you feel about you? Unapotembea, unapoingia darasani, unapoongea mbele ya wanafunzi wako, unajihisi ni mtu aina gani? Unapofundisha lile somo lako, unajihisi una authority kweli ya kusomesha lile somo. Very important self esteem. Wanasema hata kama wewe ni paka, jione kwamba ni simba. Hiyo ndiyo inaleta athari katika kusomesha wakati wewe mwenyewe unajiona kwamba you are an authority in that particular area when you lose that umepoteza thamani yako mbele ya wale unao wasomesha s ya pili ni self confidence self confidence unawaonyesha nini watu je watu wanakuona wewe kama mtu wa aina gani self confidence kwamba you don't show people that you are weak by any chance lakini kila siku unakuwa ni mtu ambaye uko tayari kuonyesha ule ujuzi wako umahiri wako 
eh yale unayajua unasema si ndio eh kuna bwana mmoja alikuwa amevaa kishekhe shekhe unajua kuna watu wengine huvaa mashekhe huvaa kishekhe shekhe lakini sio mashekhe kapiga na kilemba nini sasa alipoingia msikitini watu wakasema subhan alhamdulillah leo tumepata shekhe tutapata darasa hapa huyu lazima awe ni msomi maana kapiga kilemba cheupe kile cha wale watabliq tabliq wale eh imeshuka huko vizuri sana na kanzu yake nyeupe utafikiri jibril kataremka sasa watu walipomaliza kuswali wakaenda wakamwambia shekhe basi inshallah leo kwa vile umetutembelea msikitini mwetu basi leo utatutolea wazi kidogo you'll give us some few words of spiritual nourishment inshallah sasa akasema ah haya sawa hakuna shida akasimama akasema je mwajua yale nitakayo kuambia wale watu akasema hatujui akasema yani kutaka kujua msiyajui hata wakekera kae ni hivyo msijue mara nyingine usiwe na haraka kujua usilo lijua huyo akaenda zake Ah watu wakashangaa huyu Sheikh Sheikh aina gani sasa wewe? Siku ya pili alipokuja wale watu akasema leo tutamwambia atujui. Na ili atuambie. Ah leo tutamwambia twajua. Si jana tulisema hatujui. Leo tutamwambia twa twajua. Ah Sheikh akaingia msikiti asema haya mwajua yale ambayo nataka kuzungumzia akasema yatwajua. Akasema yani kuambia kama mwajua basi. Nyi mwajua tayari. Ukupoteza wakati sasa. Ah, wa jamaa akasema huyu Sheikh Sheikh anaga na Square Road akaja. Akija, group ya kwanza ikasema nyimu uko left, semeni hatujui. Nyimu uko right, semeni twajua. Sheikh akija sema haya, mwajua yale ambao nataka niwaambie. Wale akasema, "Twajua." Hawa akasema chini nyimu naojua, waambieni ambao hawajui. Huyu <laughs> alikuwa na nini? Alikuwa na hepa, si ndio? Eh, usipo prepare <laughs> vizuri kwa lesson. Mara nyingine unaenda class na una hepa? na hepa hepa una hepa maswali una hepa you know kuongeza muda wa masomo kwa sababu hujakuwa well prepared na kwa sida hasa andika word preparation ili tu summarize lecture yetu yote tutai summarize kwa kutumia neno preparation s zilikuwa nne tulisema ni tano si ndio tumesema self esteem self confidence self image self drive and self actualization self esteem self confidence eh? self esteem ni ile ya kujisikia undani mwako eh eh wewe ukijisikia mnyonge unakuwa mnyonge kuna saikolojia inaitwa kinesthetic psychology hii ni saikolojia inayotumika kutambua kama mtu anasema ukweli ama uongo sawa sawa kwa mfano nataka ujaribu hivi Fikiria wewe ni mtu mjinga sana. Hujui kitu, uelewi kitu, mwalimu ambaye hauna busara, kila siku una feli, wala hujafaulu katika maisha. Kubali hizo fikra zikae katika akili yako kidogo. Watu wanakuona kwamba sio mtu barabara. Fikiria kidogo. Fikiria, jifikirie kwamba wewe you are just a useless teacher. You are just a useless teacher. Very soon you will be sacked. Very soon you will be told to go. And you will never get a job anywhere else because you are stupid. How do your muscles behave when you think like that? weak hata mabega yana shook that is called lack of self esteem mabega yana shuka na ukienda darasani mabega yameshuka you can imagine how you will teach na kama huja prepare lesson mabega hu shook sasa nataka ujifikirie wewe ndiye mwalimu bora ulimwengu mzima karibu hivi karibuni uhuru atakuja Mombasa kukupa zawadi ya kwa mwalimu bora Kenya wanafunzi wote ambao umewafundisha wamepita mitihani hata wazazi wote wanakupenda hata administration inaogopa usije ukawatoroka inakuenga enga kila njia it really wants you to stay think that way the answer is obvious isn't it you feel like the energy has gone up the effect of preparation the effect of preparing for for a lesson when ukijitayarisha katika somo lako unalo lifundisha you get what they call automatic energy flow natural energy flow that's why p ya preparation unasema before you go to class when you are preparing for a lesson always maintain positivity kwa sababu ukienda darasani na fikra kwamba wale unaokwenda kuwasomesha hawajui kitu wale unaokwenda kuwasomesha hawana akili nzuri wale unaokwenda kuwasomesha hawatakuelewa basi definitely that will be the effect lakini ukienda darasani na imani kwamba mimi naenda kuwasomesha watoto ambao wana adabu nzuri, watoto ambao watanielewa vema, watoto ambao 
kumbuka ninawasomesha watoto ambao watapita mtihani basi ile athari yako ya somo lako litakuwa very positive it's natural it's a natural principle okay what comes out from your mind goes to your learner's mind whatever comes out from your heart goes to your learner's heart it's, it's natural psychological if you want to say it that way and remember we are only 30% biology but 70% psychology Okay? Yaani asilimia ya vile ulivo ni asilimia 30 peke yake ni biology. Ndio kile kiwili the muscles, the heart is only 30% of who you truly are. 70% of who you are is made up of your psychology. Kwa hivyo unapoingia darasani na psychology mbovu darasa somo pia linakuwa bovu. Unapoingia darasani na psychology nzuri somo pia linakuwa zuri sana. And that's why kila wakati ukifanya ile preparation na ukiwa na ile positive mentality you can't wait to go and teach because you are prepared but if you're not prepared you don't want the bell to ring you get my point and when the bell rings it's like oh my god where will i start and where will i end na moyo unakuwa mzito sana sasa hata usipokuwa mwangalifu maneno yako pia yanapo inapotea so p katika preparation always be positive wanasema mtazame mtoto vile unataka awe baada ya kumsomesha atakuwa vivyo hivyo mtazame mtoto vile ambavyo unataka awe kabla baada ya kumsomesha atakuwa vivyo hivyo kwa sababu ya natural reaction baina ya wewe na na yule mtoto Ebu ni waulize swali gumu, si gumu pingine litakuwa gumu. Wale ambao wameoa na wameolewa, ulijuaje aliyokuoa atakuoa na ulijuaje ulimooa utamooa? Hakukuwa na chemistry yoyote baina ya nyinyi wawili. There was no chemistry. Hakukuwa na chemistry. Ustaz, hakukuwa na chemistry. Moyo haukudunda. Damu haikwenda mbio. Maneno hayakukupotea. Mato hayakuanguka. Nothing. No chemistry. Then you're married to a wrong person. Go divorce that person. Are you getting my point? It's a natural reaction. Ni natural reaction ya binadamu wawili. Lazima kuwe na connection ili kusudi kuwe na ma- maelewano. Mawadda wa rahma. Si ndio na katika kufundisha kwenye darasa lazima kuwe na mawadha ya aina yake na rahma pia mwalimu akimchukia mwanafunzi na mwanafunzi akimchukia mwalimu kusoma haku kusoma kipenzi kwa hivyo that's that positivity is key kwa mfano majority of students fail mathematics not because they don't have the ability but they have a problem with their mentality si ndio So learning does not is not controlled by your ability. Learning is controlled by the mentality. How you see what you see inakuwa ni. So, so P katika preparation. Wakati tunajitayarisha kuenda kusomesha. Point number one ni kuwa tumekubali kwanza tunajua kulisomesha lile somo tunalotaka kulisomesha. Tumeelewana? Na wale unaokwenda kuwasomesha wana uwezo wa kuelewa lile somo unalo wasomesha. That's the beginning now. That's what they call mwalimu called it conceptualization. Conceptualization. Any plan, lesson plan, building plan, life plan, project plan, every plan begins with conceptualization. You don't do it until you finish it. You will never build a house before you finish it. You have to finish it in the head. Can you see it? Three stages of conceptualization. Can you see your students listening to you when you are teaching? Can you see them? Eh? Can you see them? If you can't see if you can see if you can't see them, the lesson will not be effective. You have to see them. Wanaskiliza, wanaelewa. You have to see it because what the mind can conceive, the heart believes and as maybe you achieve I am repeating it's very important what the mind can conceive the heart believes and ultimately you achieve kile akili inachokiona moyo hukubali na mwili ukatenda 
So ni lazima uone kwanza there has to be an image. I mean, did you see your wife before you married her? Or did you see your husband? And somebody tells you, "Wow, this is my dream wife." Have you heard people say that? Have you? Have you heard huyu ndiye mke wangu wa ndotoni wallahi. Kimeona kwamba ali moyo wangu wa juu. Kama macho yangu mawili ya look at you. Simwambie wa pili that I love you, yo mame. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Conceptualization, the idea, the, 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 the ability to see things before they even happen. It's called conceptualization. You teach in the brain before before I came here to interact with you today, I had to do three rehearsals. That's why I can do it now very comfortably. If I didn't do it before I came here, believe me, ningekuwa saa zote niko kwenye PowerPoint. Ningekuwa nasoma word after after word. So the preparation begins in the in the mind. Then you go to the stage two. Now you can see that. Can you explain it to somebody what you see? Kile unachokiona, je, waweza kumwambia mtu mwingine? Because teaching is twice learning. Wale wazungumzaji wenye kulipwa pesa nyingi sana huwa mara nyingi wakijizungumzia wao wenyewe kwanza kabla hajaenda hall kuzungumza. Normally they will have a mirror in front of them and they will talk and talk and talk the whole lecture they are going to give in the hall. By the time they go to the hall they have already given that lecture somewhere else. Now repetition is easy, yes, isn't it? Yeah. So hiyo inakuwa can you tell somebody? Can you bring it from your head? Now ya tatu can you write it down as a lesson plan now? So how many stages have I said? The image, the mental picture, the description and the writing now. So before you write the lesson plan, you must have gone through two stages. All these three stages are called stages of conceptualization. Teaching before you go to the classroom. Unaona, unaona darasa litakuwa hivi. Na ndio maana moja katika advice unapewa wakati unataka kwenda kutoa khutba maana kiwataka ufanye ile khutba yako itikise itikise wajua zile khutba za kutikisa nyoyo eh yeah. eh yeah. kwanza unakwenda pale hall kabla ya watu yani unaiangalia ile hall kuna mtu atakaa pale kuna mmoja na kuna yule mkorofi mkorofi yule ambaye atakakunuliza maswali ya kijinga jinga huenda akakaa pale eh yeah. sasa ule mwingine nitamgonga vipi sasa you have the picture of where you're going to speak Ukienda sasa kuzungumza pale mahali spageni. Spageni. Kwa hivyo hakukutishi, utatetema, utapoteza maneno, uta So preparation begins in the in the mind. And in the mind there are three stages. Kwanza create the mental picture, then discuss that picture with somebody else and then now write it down as your lesson as your lesson plan. So P, let me change the P from positive to perception. From positive to perception. Kama mwalimu ni muhimu sana kuwa na mental picture ya every lesson you are going to conduct. Today I had a mental picture that will be in the mosque because the last time we were in the mosque. So when I arrived there I said oh my god today I am in trouble. I am not going to talk to these people in the mosque. I am going to talk to them in the lab. And my mind had already formed that picture of uh, the mosque which is wide and there'll be more rooms and I will divide these people in groups and I had already taught you and I knew exactly where I will start and where I will end when I came here and I'm told now you're getting into the lab I say wow my lesson plan has to change has to change so we go to R you have to be realistic sometimes what is in your mind may not be what is practically in the classroom are preparation lazima uwe na reality kwamba mimi ni kweli sasa najitayarisha lakini huenda nikaenda darasani nikakuta mambo yako tofa uti labda hii mada this topic or this topic these students of mine have already gone through it maybe through a teacher on youtube and whatever the moment i introduce it they tell me everything i'll be wasting ta- time now what will be the reality there now you have to find a way of moving to another step so that you don't look like a fool and the students will just be there looking at you 
you know, when they have already gone ahead, ahead of it. So that reality must also dwell in your mind. And that's why teachers are always encouraged to over-prepare. Over-prepare. You must have a spare tire in your mind somewhere that you can be able to see it differently. And therefore you can adjust quickly without the students realizing that you are not very good in what you're doing. However, being, be realistic. Be real, realistic. And sometimes when things get out of hand and you've already prepared, then you have also to admit, you have also to admit that you had planned to do this and this, but then things have turned out to be like this, you'll need some time to, to adjust. And then you do the adjustment. E, preparation has the component of engagement. Where? In your process of preparing, you need to ask yourself, where? Which role will the student play? Yani wale wanafunzi wako, wata contribute vipi katika lile somo lako? Where will they come in? Because one way learning is never effective. Wachina wasema, ukisoma kwa kusikia peke yaki, wapata asilimia 25 ya yale unayasoma. Lakini ukichanganya kusikia na kuona utapata asilimia hamsini unaweza soma. Ukichanganya kusikia kuona alafu ukaandika utapata asilimia sabini na tano. Ukichanganya kusikia kuona ukaandika alafu ukasema utapata asilimia tisaini. Lakini ukichanganya kusikia kuona kuandika kusema na baadaye kutenda utapata asilimia na tano. The progressive stages of learning in terms of preparing are that means therefore the lesson plan your preparation should have areas where the learners will be involved the areas at what point will you allow your learners to come to come in learning by doing is more effective than learning by hearing very very important so be realistic and engage. Hakuna method ambayo ina athari kubwa zaidi katika kusomesha kama participatory learning and action. P L A participatory learning and action. In the lesson preparation there must be action areas. Areas ambazo kutakuwa na action sio mazungumzo peke yake usijidai kwa umbo maumbile sote sawa. Nyusi na nywele ni pambo huota na kunyolewa. Yapo maalum mambo yafaa kuzingatiwa. Ada ya mja hunena, mungwana ni vitendo. Tenda watu wataona, majisifu weka kandu. What you see, seeing is believing. You have to do it. The demonstration is key when it comes to teaching and learning, learning process. So E for preparation stands for engagement Utakubali wanafunzi wako engage wewe na je wewe utawa engage hawa wanafunzi through questioning or through demonstration or through explanation participatory learning and action P As you prepare think Stephen Covey katika principles zake saba za mwalimu bora anasema a great teacher is the one who always teaches with the end in mind teaches with the end in mind yani ukiwa unasomesha unafikiria zaidi matokeo ya masomo yako unasomesha kwa nini why are you teaching why why if the why is strong enough teaching becomes easy why are you teaching why are you teaching why are you making this kid memorize Quran? Why? Kwani unanafanya mtoto anahifadhi Quran? Kwani unanafanya mtoto ana memorize formula ya mathematics? Why are you teaching this kid the history of Kenya or the history of slavery? Why? What's the reason? Objectivity. Thinking with the end in mind, being result oriented, thinking like the CBC with the learning outcome more than the content. That's what they call product, the outcome, thinking with the end in mind. Eh? Walimu wa madrasa, iza arata antafa ala amran, fatadabara ahakibatahu. Uko mwisho, mimi nasomesha haya yote na nasomesha. Lakini lengo langu, 
Niliipi jamii ni nataka nini kifanyike kwa huyu mtoto? Now if you know where you are going, going there becomes easy. My dear colleagues, you can never hit a target that you cannot see. And you cannot see a target which you don't have. So teaching must be target based. You must be keen yale matokeo yatakuwa VP at the end of the day. A katika preparation. A katika preparation. The application part of it is this really applicable? Yale unayasomesha, yale unayasomesha. Kwa nini wajiuliza hivyo kwa sababu mwanadamu hafanyi kitu ambacho anahisi hakina maana katika maisha yake? Hafanyi. Sasa lazima ueleze maana ya kwa nini ni muhimu wewe kujua kibla wapi? Ni muhimu. Sasa mwanafunzi mueleze umuhimu wa kile kibla nini kabla hujamfundisha kibla Kiki ni kipi na lazima aste. Ni lazima mwenzi mwana kwa nini? Why should I study mathematics? What for? Why do I have to, to study logarithms and, and whatever, indexes and whatever? Why do I have to study the thing that students hate most in the chemistry is what? Chemistry. The moles, the, the cold moles. <laughs> Why must I waste my time studying moles? What for? You know, so, so if you can't explain to a student why they must study what you are teaching them, then studying becomes very difficult. I said in the morning, if you know the reason why, and the why can make you cry, you will always fly, no matter the circumstances. Even if you have to die, at the end of the day you go above the sky, because you know the reason. Hakuna kitu kigumu. As long, and that's why the theories of motivating people to learn, ya ninjia ya kuwafanya watu wapende, wawe na mahaba, to fall in love with knowledge, you know? Fall in love with learning. You know, now one element of making people fall in love in learning with learning is to make them realize that learning is as important as their lives. Education is not about employment and job, and education is life itself. You mess with education, you've messed with your life. It's as simple as that. Now it's not about getting an A in the exam, it's not about getting it. it's about life. It's about life. Now, when the learner buys the idea that this education is about my life. They will learn anything you want them to learn. And they will learn. Believe me, they will. But there has to be a reason, the meaning. So, muhim sana, kuonyesha the application part of that knowledge. That knowledge, where is it going to be applicable? And your mana katika lesson preparation, you have to use examples that are relevant to the learner. You don't use example, ambayo ni mbali sana, ata haijui, haifikiri, wala hajayon. R, the second R, preparation. You have to see how the connection will be established between what is learnt and who is learning. Nimesema awali, kwa mba mtoto, inikuwa uleza swali leo, kwa mfano. Ni mwalimu gani ambaye huta msahau katika maisha ya kwa nali kufanya nini? Na ni mwalimu gani ambaye ukipata kama we ungekua mungu, ungekua usha muangamizi? Lakini wewe si Mungu. So you can't do it. <laughs> ni mwalimu gani haswa? Kila ukimfikiria moyo unafuma. Yeye alikufanya usiwe daktari. Yeye alikufanya usiwe wakili. Yeye ndio amekufanya usikuwe sheikh mkubwa. Yeye ndio amekufanya urudi nyuma katika maisha. Huyo mwalimu, mwalimu gani huyo? Unaweza kumfikiria mmoja hapo? Unaweza kumfikiria mmoja hapo katika walimu waliokusomesha yule mmoja ambaye yeye ndio alikufanya uchukie somo fulani vibaya sana. Ndiyo ile kufanya utukie akida sana na u yeye yeye ye, ye, tu alikufanya alikufanya utukie ile hisabu kabisa kile kiingereza kabisa that teacher now if you can be able to distinguish between the teacher that you can't forget and the teacher that you curse every day now that can make you think twice when you're teaching and that's why that relationship between you and the learner is key mrs thompson was a teacher of grade 2 of grade 3 Mrs Thompson alikuwa na tabia akiingia klasini kwake anasema I love you all lakini alikuwa anajua katika ile darasa kuna mtoto hampendi yu amchukia amchukia aitwa Kodovo anamchukia Kodovo asa wakati mtihani umemalizwa term ina kufunga si walimu anatengeza report card alafu ameteka kwa principal ana sign pia Principal akaona form, report form ya Kodovo. Akaona 
ameanguka sana na comment ya mwalimu sio nzuri akamuita Mrs Thompson kama Mrs Thompson the meaning of progress report is to show some progress how come the report of Kodovo is not showing any progress Mrs Thompson akasema that boy is very stupid and there is nothing i can say better than what i have said he is the most stupid boy i have in class so that is what he is i'm not going to change it principal akamwambia ngoja akatumana secretary wake aende akalete file ya kodovo alipokuwa grade 2 sasa yuko grade 3 akaletu akamwambia mrs thompson soma hii file akisoma anaona kodovo alikuwa ndiye mtoto wa kwanza katika darasa lakini alipofika muhula wa tatu mamake akapata kansa kwa hivyo na kodovo ndio akawa mtu wa kumtizama mamake na kansa kwa sababu alikuwa ni wao wawili peke yao na kwa vile mamake alikuwa na kansa yeye ndio alikuwa akimpikia akimfulia kisha ndio aje klasini hasa mwalimu wa grade 2 ameandika pale chini kodovo ameanza kuanguka kimasomo kwa sababu ya maradhi ya mamake kama shule haitochukua hatua kumsaidia Kodovo, Kodovo atamkosa mamake na atakosa na masomo yake. Mrs. Thompson aliposoma ile roho ika, "Wa! So I've been punishing this boy for no good reason. Huyu mtoto ana sababu ndio maana afanye vizuri darasani." Akamwambia mwalimu mkuu, "Usijali, kuanzia leo mambo yatabadilika." Akienda darasani kawaida yake, "Good morning class. I love you all." But that time he loved Kodovo more than anybody else. Wakati wanafunzi wanakwenda darasa lingine kuwa wanafanyia party yule mwalimu aliwasomesha katika ile darasa la nyuma. Na wanafundi wanaleta zawadi, makeki, manini. Huyu Kodovo katika zile zawadi kuna moja ilikuwa imefungwa katika gazeti. Yule mwalimu akajua tu hii ya gazeti ni ya Kodovo. Akachukua ile ya gazeti kufungua kuna chupa ya perfume ambayo imetumika imebaki kidogo. Na bangili ambayo nini nyingine zimeanza kuanguka. Akachukua ile bangili akaivaa, alafu akajipiga ile harufu mafuta ile. Yule kodo akamwambia leo wanukia kama mamangu. That's the perfume my mother used to wear every day. And that thing you are wearing is the last thing we removed before we put my mom in the coffin. You know that? Yeah? You are the best teacher I have ever seen. If it were not because of you I will never be who I am today. Mr. Thompson makasema, Kodovo. Today I have learned one very important thing that before a teacher becomes a teacher must be a parent of every child they teach. Because if it were not because of you I would have not known. I would never have known that before you are a teacher you must be a parent of every child that you are teaching. So ni muhimu sana ile uhusiano wetu na wanafunzi wetu uhusiano wa mwalimu na mwanafunzi katika preparation ile kama uhusiano wako unafikiria wajua you can't wait to go and teach students you like you can't you want to be in that class you like those kids and believe me it's so difficult to teach a class you don't like how many of you have had that experience you can't wait for the bell to go particularly that stupid one you see that girl that boy who makes your life you know difficult in that class You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Mrs. Ndwego was my colleague in Wa High School where I used to teach in the earlier days. And every time she had her lesson in form 2, she will ask me, "Mujahid, do you want additional class?" I said, "Yeah, yeah. I want. Yeah, you can have my class. You can have my... But one day I said, "Hey, Madam Ndwego, what's wrong with you? When will you teach? You're teaching English." I said, "Ah, man, I can't stand that class. <laughs> I can't." So either the principal changes me from that class or that class will never see me. You go and teach them. <laughs> It's hard for a teacher, isn't it? So are in preparation. Wakati una prepare kwenda kusomesha darasa ambalo kuna wanafunzi wanakuridhisha. Una raha na wewe, ni rafiki zako. Preparation yako inakuwa tofauti. Na unapo prepare darasa ambalo kuna mijini kule, mishetani, mizuka, misawazi. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Allah tena. You can't even. So you have to work hard to establish that relationship which is very process as as you prepare. The next A. Preparation. Adapt. Adapt to situation. There is a, a learning approach that is called incidental learning. Incidental learning. Incidental learning. You have prepared good. But you've prepared to teach something that is very far fetched and when you class 
you discover it was raining. And in your scheme of work, there is a topic you have to talk about the sources of water. Now you have to close the lesson plan and talk about the water. Because now it's a living experience, you know? There's water, there's rain, there's rain. Now that's what we call flexibility in preparation. Flexibility in preparation. There's an incident that has happened in the television that morning in the history, and you have a history lesson to talk about that issue, that touches on that issue. You don't have to wait until the scheme work says you teach it in the ninth week and it is in the third week. Preparation has to be, you have to adapt to situation. Nainakuwa raisi sana. We are going hajj. Na hajj topic in Nakuja wakati wa Ramadan. It's useless. It will be easier to teach hajj wakati watu wanakwenda hajj. Ramadan in Nakuja wakati tofauti sana wakati wakwenda hajj. Ni vizuri kufurisha Ramadan katika mwezi wa Ramadan. Ata kama syllabus yasema haingiliani na ule mwezi. You have to adapt. Preparation requires a adaption. Ili kusudi kupatikane na live experiences live example vitu ambavyo vinatokea kila kila wakati vina athiri preparation yako t timely you have to be timely time and tides wait for no man time and tides by the way have you found yourself in a situation where you are teaching a topic that you so much like so you expand and expand and expand and expand because you like that topic is your favorite topic it was the topic you liked in campus so much now here it is in the syllabus now you enjoy teaching that topic there's a friend of mine who likes teaching reproduction so much you know that's the only topic he enjoys teaching in science he will teach it for four weeks <laughs> I say, my friend, you are going against the syllabus, so you have to be careful sometimes. Marangino, you are preparing, and you are preparing something that you interest. It's in your blood. You like it so much. Now you are carried away. You include things that are above, above, above ile level. Ambayo una una somesha. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu ni area ambayo wewe una unaipenda. Ni area that you can easily. So you have to be time conscious. It's very very important. Time and tides waits for no man. I preparation. Make sure you have taken into consideration the interest of the learners. Wanafunzi wakisoma yale wanaotaka kuyasoma. Kuyasoma inakuwa rahisi. So be careful wakati unasomesha unapotoa mifano toa mifano inalingana na umri na wale watoto usitoe mifano ya wazee kama sisi wewe unafundisha darasa la form 1 alafu unataka kuzungumza mifano ya watu wa miaka 60 ya wao sunini watoto wa miaka 14 mifano ya watu wa miaka 60 zungumza mifano ya watoto wa miaka 14 ili kusudi waone yale masomo yanaingiliana na maisha yao yana affect maisha yao sio masomo tu yaliyokuwa katika katika vitabu peke yake lazima iwe itakuwa na ile interest interest ya wale wanaosoma inazingatiwa katika kule kutengeneza na kujitarisha kusoma kwako o the objectivity objectivity not subjectivity malengo shabaha hadaf malengo Shabaha yake ni nini huku kusomesha kwako? What do you want to see at the end of the day? At the end of the lesson. Sometimes inakuwa routine. Eh kwa sababu in the lesson plan there is an area where you are right specific objectives, ndio? Smart objectives, eh? What is smart? Nini maana smart? Kama ukisema hii ni smart objective. Sikizi wanaongeza smart GR. Your objective must be smart GR. Wakati unaandika objective katika lesson plan that objective equal smart gr equal specific m measurable a achievable r realistic and t time bound and g gender sensitive and r right based right based now gender sensitive ni kumaanisha objective zako haziko masculine kila wakati you blend masculine plus femininity and then right base ni kwamba usipotimiza lengo la somo lako mwanafunzi anaweza kukushtaki katika koti na ukafungwa kwa sababu umempotezea wakati wake 
umemweka kwa miaka kwa siku kwa dakika 40 kumsomesha kitu ambacho hakuelewa anaweza kwenda kukuletea wakili akakupeleka kortini umenipoteza dakika 40 zangu dakika 40 za maisha yangu umenisomesha kitu ambacho siku ki elewa so hakikisha zile objective zako ni objective wajua mwanafunzi atazi elewa kama hajazielewa na ni mwanafunzi anayefahamu sheria za kielimu siku ya pili unaweza kupata barua kutoka kwa wakili unaweza kueleza kwa nini ulimpotezea mwanafunzi huyu dakika zake 40 kumsomesha kitu ambacho hakukifahamu you get my point so smart specific yeah measurable achievable realistic time bound gender sensitive and then right base so oh muhimu sana mwalimu amesema unakuwa na introduction kuna kuwa na objective content to be covered methods you will use to cover that content vitabu na mraja ambao utaotumia kadhalika ah mimi nishasomesha miaka mingi bwana haina haja ya mraja hakuna hakuna ma, ya baath hakuna haja ya research mimi nishasomesha miaka mingi unaingia tu hivi ukiingia unakutana na watoto ambao wamesoma rafiki yangu wacha kutoa kijasho chef uhu wanakuuliza maswali oh subhanallah eh tena wanakukotia hii hadithi iko katika kitabu fulani kitabu fulani kitabu fulani ala kumbe kuna na hadithi kama hizo eh ziko sta wewe usijui eh <laughs> sasa muhimu sana kwamba uyu uh, somebody who is always trying to see ile resource ha? ile 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 maregeo yako yako wapi unatumia vitabu gani vitabu gani unasoma Anasema moja katika sifa za watu wanapenda maendeleo ya maisha wanasoma kitabu kimoja kwa wiki minimum Sasa kama wewe usomi kitabu kimoja kwa wiki na manisha you have to pull up your socks Watu wanaotaka kujiendeleza kimaisha yani kukua different every day they read one book per week in the area of their interest to an extent that when now they are talking about those areas they are truly experts najua ndugu zangu teaching is influencing si ndio teaching is influencing when you are teaching you are trying to influence someone's behavior to change eh? and become a better person na ku influence watu ni lazima uzingatie mambo matano kwanza lazima uwe na authority ku influence authority ni kumaanisha wewe una amri kwa sababu wajua yule unayemwambia hajui ni lazima akusikie una authority una sauti juu ya yule ambaye unamwambia pili lazima uwe na credibility credibility kumaanisha kwamba uendi kinyume na yale unayoyasema kuna mashaka wawili polen mashaka ameenda pale mama mwingine drive wakapiga handa alhamdulillah mashaka wa Abu Hurairah hawali marugia kuna mashaka mengine mashallah mashallah jioni jioni ambwa ambwa sasa wakisha kuambua pale mara mwadhini kazini wa bahari magharibi vile eh hey, jamaa mwadhini mwadhini na wewe mama imamu eh wakati wakatoa mashabu mashabu ile ukasukutoa sukuta oyo wakaingia msikitini sasa akaingia msikitini handas ziko hapo shaka Allahu akbar akasoma yani sura tofata kasudes yani kisha akaivuta ile shada madda ah ile walabwa le sasa na maamuma nao wakaingia majazba wasema ha 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 shaka sema once more yani ameona raha ile amini ilivyo vutwa sasa ukiwa shaka kama hiyo inakuwa shida oya shaka sasa you have to be very very careful my friend eh and then end when you are preparing you have to learn to negotiate the content end for negotiation you negotiate the the content so that you are able you know to take what you think is good suitable suitable to the learner that's very important so one element about time for salah is almost coming ni kwamba this lesson preparation gives you an upper hand in classroom management it gives you an upper hand in classroom management okay and they say classroom management where is this Computer. Classroom management. Okay? Kwamba kule ukiji prepare vizuri unaingia katika 
classroom management vizuri sana yani inakuwa ni rahisi kupata klasi yako ambayo itakuwa ya chini ya okay so it's effective discipline discipline kiarabu education ina tarbia tarbia is character ndio ni ni ile akhlaki ya mtu yani kwa hivyo ikiwa tusomesha na discipline amna then we have a problem wanasema teaching without discipline is like loving without marrying is useless how can somebody tell you i want i love you and then says but i can't marry you it contradicts isn't it yeah teaching without discipline is like tea without sugar only diabetic people can drink that tea though it's healthy but it's not easy to drink tea without sugar so no sorry to say this is for the young people very important teaching without discipline is like love without kissing doesn't make sense so at the end of the day the, the heaviness of that kwamba wewe una unasomesha with effective classroom management you create good levels of uh, discipline na discipline is a dual process wewe kama mwalimu hauko discipline mwanafunzi pia hayuko discipline sio the sea of contradiction yamani ni sikizeni mtani yani unapata watu wengine wanakuambia wewe fuata yale ninayo sema tu nayo yafanya si shauri shauri yako hiyo ni ni maisha yangu as a mwalimu unfortunately and that's why many people don't want to become teachers when you are a teacher your life is post and you live your students life unfortunately unfortunately and if you really want to be a great teacher your life has to pause because when you do anything that will contradict what you are saying in the classroom out there man your authority is gone your credibility is gone and that's why it's very difficult to be a teacher many people want to be a good teacher kwa sababu lazima uvae smart lazima usiende mahali fulani ufai kuenda vitu fulani ufai kufanya maneno fulani ufai kusema at the end of the day you are limited maisha yako yako limited ustaz alafu mambo mengine hapo inakuwa shida kabisa classroom management also is being prepared for class kama tulivyozungumza it's motivating your student motivating your student and i want you to pause a little bit how do you motivate students to learn walimu wengi wanakuambia ah wanafunza siku hizi hawana motivation ya kusoma kwanza hawa waswahili ndio kabisa hawa salama hapa wao wanafikiria mambo mengine tu how do you bring them back to class wasifikirie kwenda qatar na na, na bahrain na saudi arabia wasifikirie zile vitu vya nje wao wako darasani how do you motivate learners to learn how do you make learners learn How do you make learners enjoy learning? Because it is only when they enjoy learning they watakuwa disciplined katika class. Kama hawa enjoy learning watakusumbua katika darasa. Kama hawajui kwa nini wanasoma. Write the word motivation M O motive M O T I V E motive motive And there you'll get the strategies of motivation. Nimesema alia When you teach without inspiring is like hitting on a cold iron. Kwa hivyo in every lesson spend at least two minutes inspiring the learners even if it means using a quote. Make them see the reason why they need to be attentive. Inspire them. And that's why in our introductions we are told we can use a story, you can use a poem, you can use a relevant example, you can use a case study. All that is to make the learner ready to learn. Somebody said somewhere if I am given 10 hours to cut a tree I will use 9 sharpening the saw and only one hour to cut the tree because without the saw being sharp I will use 3 days cutting down that tree but if my saw is sharp it will only take me 15 minutes to cut down the tree so when the learner is ready to learn your teaching becomes very easy But if they are not ready to learn my friend you will teach yourself and learning will never take place because these kids are not ready to learn so it is explaining m for motive explain the meaning try to inspire try to inspire and inspiration comes from your personality from your experiences using other people's quotes using example kutumia mifano tofauti tofauti ya kufaulu ili na wao watamani now you have to be very careful you cannot tell a rich child 
If you study, you'll become rich. That child is already rich. Are you getting my point? Yeah. Now you have to find another way. For example, unajua nyinyi kwenu ni matajiri sana. Na babako wako na pesa nyingi sana. Na ameandika accountant, ndio? Eh. Yeah. Unajua wewe accountant kama hamtakuwa mmesoma anaweza kuchukua hiyo pesa ya baba? Yeah. Sasa ni nyinyi musome ili mkimaliza nyinyi ndio mkuu maka account. Yeah. Now that makes sense. Isn't it? Now you are working hard to protect the money that is there. Babako wako na uloya, si ndio babako eh? Si babako ni milionea, wako na uloya eh? Unajua yule uloya anaweza kufanya ujinga ujinga, baba eh yeah, sasa study and become a lawyer. You have to take. Babako anakuwa mgonjwa, si ndio? Unajua wale nurses they can put poison kwa sababu wako tajiri atakufa. You have to become a doctor and treat your father yourself. What am I saying? I'm saying even that motivation must must be relevant to the needs of that Lana, najua kwa muda mrefu tena ukisoma vizuri utapata kazi nzuri sana na mtoto anaona Kenya nzima watu wana kazi na wako na madigri. Alafu wewe bado unamwambia ukisoma vizuri utapata kazi nzuri sana. Eh? Ukisoma utapeleka gari na anakuona wewe mwalimu aupeleki gari. <laughs> you have to be careful when you are motivating the learners. Sasa, so aim for meaning. Explain the purpose. You know the purpose of living is living a purposeful life. Look for a reason. Look for something that will make that kid think twice. We make that kid change. Oh, build optimism. You know, if you if you noticed, every time I wanted to start a new session, I was nilikuwa nawaambia hii itakuwa nzuri kuliko ile iliyo pita. Na kutokana na hii mtafaika. You have to build that. I'm not going to waste your time, man. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I'm not Yeah, so when the kids know that you're not going to waste their time, you're not going to waste their time, they listen to you. They do. Because when you are upotezi mda mda wao. T always be timely. Na you are kichache ntamu kingi we wembeza. Don't overdo things, eh? Yeah. Be strategic in the way you do your things and motivation will come very easily. Okay? I take advantage of their interest balance balance sometimes prepare the lesson together with them let them enjoy the, get them involved get them involved take care of their interest v build value add value on them add value add value unaona last month you guys had only about 10 arabic vocabulary today you have 20 you know what because you are attentive in class You know the English you spoke last week is different from the English you're speaking today. You know why? Because of the English class. Look at the way you are doing mathematics today. That's not how you did mathematics when you came to the school. You've changed now. Look at the way you are understanding chemistry now. So there has to be you have to show them that your teaching is adding value on them. Is it hard to read Quran for you now? No. You see? That's the good thing of coming to this school. Now you can read Quran. Is it hard for you to speak Arabic? No. Yes because hey, is it is it so at the end of the day the kid realizes wow here i am adding value nina ongezeka nina kuwa mtu mwingine nina pata faida kwa sababu ni maumbile yetu binadamu hatufanyi vitu ambavyo havina faida na maisha yetu lazima kuwe na faida ndani yake kwa hivyo ile faida ikionyeshwa inakuwa rahisi motivation a create higher aspiration the higher you go the cooler it becomes stop thinking small man think big and make them also think big waonyeshe how big life how big opportunities are in life waone kwamba hii school ni njia ya mimi kufikia yale malengo ya juu kule kwa nini utakufa hapa kunorani kuna na hong kong yataka kuendewa wafikiri utaenda hong kong bila you know eh, si hong kong peke yake kuna na new york wewe unkatu hapa majengo sidiri uh, hapa mjinga we eh wewe atoka hapa kisauni wewe fala nini watu wanaka huko show them this world is big it's not about mombasa only na kibokoni no 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 this world is a great place there are nice places in this world there are beautiful women in this world there are handsome men in this world haven't you seen them this money in this world you know what i'm talking about the ease the no <laughs> i don't know if you're getting what i'm saying yeah making yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yani you have to build the bigger picture the bigger picture hasa mtoto akiwa na yale matarajio matamanio ya maisha ya ya juu ni rais sana kumpika kwa sababu anaangalia yuenda 
you are in the wapi. Anaangalia anaenda wapi? Sawa sawa? Motivation another o. Oh. Mo- motives, ndio? Yes. Ah nimefanya makosa basi. Nimesema motives, ndio? M nimesema ni nini? Meaning a ha o. Optimism T timely I interest Z add value and then empower them sometimes ask to, them to do peer teaching empower them so that they feel good oh hata mimi naweza kusomesha so leo wapatie fursa let them also teach each other eh? give them projects they come to present wanaona raha eh wakiwa na wao wanaweza kufanya lile unaloweza kufanya wewe kama mwalimu kwa hivyo hiyo ndizo strategies za ku motivate wanafunzi ili wapende kusoma somo lako wapende kuendelea na masomo na masomo yao kadhalika it builds your students self esteem and it brings uh, it it's being creative and imaginative in daily lesson kwamba wewe kila siku unakuwa na jambo jingine na jambo geni katika yale unayo ya sasa so it's different for everyone kila mtu iko tofauti you know i want you to understand this from me today every child can learn the only difference is their style of learning Hakuna mtoto aliyeumbwa ambaye hawezi kusoma. Every human being has the ability to learn. The only difference is the style of learning. Kila mwanafunzi ana uwezo wa kusoma. Tofauti ni njia ya kusoma. Mwenyezi Mungu ameumba njia saba za kusomea. Kuna binadamu wengine they are auditory in nature. Their intelligence is in their ears. They just need to be in class, listen, and that's it. They have it. They are auditory learners. Kuna wanafunzi wengine, they are visual learners. They need to see it. You have to show them. When they see with their eyes, they got it. Some students are what they call uh, kinesthetic learners. That means you have to do actions. You have to demonstrate for them to learn there are some students who are intra personal intelligent they only study when you give them attention as individual not when you teach the class there are some students who are inter you need to teach them in a group give them group work give them project they will learn and there are some students who are sensory learners they have to write in order to learn and there are some students who have multiple ability learning styles so when you know which student has which style which ability of learning then learning becomes very easy so the style the personality attitudes the students population not all management strategies are effective for every teacher inategemea lile darasa na wale wanafunzi unao wasomesha so the different strategy to see if they work for you then you use the one that is really working for for you tuko pamoja swala inakuwa sanga kasoro we have 5 minutes eh? why is classroom management important why is it very important is important because satisfaction and enjoyment in teaching are dependent upon leading students to cooperate ukiwa na darasa ambalo wanafunzi hawa cooperate na wewe it's boring man it kills poisonous toxic really lakini darasa ambalo wanafunzi wako very cooperative okay unawapatia kazi wanafanya wanasikiliza they ask questions they give answers now you enjoy that class satisfaction comes there number two, it's important because classroom management issues are of the highest concern for beginning teachers wale ambao ndio wanagenzi wanaanza sasa hizi kwa hivyo kufahamu na kuelewa ni vipi lile darasa utalipanga watoto utakaa vipi yule mwerevu atakaa wapi yule ambaye hajiweza atakaa wapi yule mwenye shida ya kuona atakaa wapi yule mtukutu atakaa wapi kabla hujasomesha umelipanga lile darasa sio katikati ya masomo ndio unaanza kugeuza geuza unajua hapa yule ni mtukutu akikaa nyuma kule atanisumbua kuja hapa kuja hapa Eh, yule kule yule kule hapendi kuzungumza yule. Leta karibu na yeye. Na kadhalika. Huyu yuko sawa, yeye anaweza kwenda kule nyuma kule. Yule ana shida ya macho nafikiri. Wacha akaka hapo. Huyu atakaa hapa katikati. Huyu akikaa ni rafiki yake That's called class control, class management. Sasa ukianza kusomesha inakuwa ni rahisi sana. Again my dear colleagues, principle for successful classroom management. Principles, principle number one deal with destructive behaviors. 
but also manage to minimize off task non destructive behavior don't always usiwe kila siku unaona yale ambayo hayaridhishi peke yake angalia pia yale yanayo ridhisha unajua kila siku ukizungumza juu ya yasiyoridhisha kwa manafunzi basi wanaku wanazidi kukutia chuki wanakuudhi lakini ikiwa mara nyingine unawasifu una hata kama bado hawajastahili zile sifa kuwapa tu ile moyo ya kwamba wanaweza kubadi kubadilika again teach students to manage their own behavior kwa sababu hawezi kuwa nao kila mahali uko nao darasani na je nje na wakiwa break na wakiwa lunch so you have to give them static, t- tactics tricks techniques of doing personal behavior management kwa sababu hawezi kuwa na wewe kila wakati again colleagues students learn to be on task and engage in, engage in the learning activities you have planned for them kwa hivyo ukiwapangia alafu ukiwaonyesha jinsi ya kufahamu na kuelewa inakuwa rahisi sana it is more natural to be off task than being on task kwamba wao wakiwa wataachiwa ule uhuru wa kujisimamia wenyewe wana they learn to become independent you know life for students is based on four f's four f's f number one, they enjoy being famous they want to become celebrity all of them yeah that's why they are all on tiktok they all want to become celebrity number two, they enjoy freedom they want to be left alone okay number three, they want to have finances money okay and the last one which is really a struggle for you teacher to make them develop is the fear of the lord which is the peak of the wisdom now so the four f's are very key katika ile managing the learner when do you give them the opportunity to enjoy freedom when do you give them opportunity to learn how to make money and become financially independent when do you give them freedom to become famous in school you know that's why co curricular is very important if you're not the best in math you should be the best in running if you're not the best in english you're the best in acting that that kind of being famous in the school because of one thing or the other comes them down from those traits of adolescence na wanakuwa wenye kukusikiliza. Okay? Muhimu sana ndugu zangu, walimu wenzangu, techniques for better class control. And this will be the last one before we go to the mosque. Focus attention on entire class. Be concerned. Be concerned. Do you want to learn something from me? Do you want to learn something from me? For you to become a different person, you have to hate the person you are today. For you to become a different person, you have to hate the person you are today if you are okay with who you are today you will never become a different person because you are okay you become an okay person paka ujichukie vile ulivyo ndio utafanya bidii uwe mtu tofauti chukia vile unavyosomesha utasomesha vema zaidi chukia hali yako ya maisha utapata maisha bora zaidi when you you unajua kuna bwana mmoja alikuwa na shamba anatembea shambani kwake akaona mbwa analia hmm 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 akauliza huu umbo wa nani huyu mwenye akasema huyu umbo ni wangu kama basi mbona analialia ovyo hapa akamwambia eh amekalia msumari huyu umbo akasema kama amekalia msumari si ainuke ya nini kukalia msumari akasema msumari haujamdunga vikutoshi si kukimdunga ukimuumiza atainuka yeye mwenyewe bila kukuizwa na we don't change until we become uncomfortable with the situation we are in in life You don't change until you become uncomfortable with the situation you are in. The day you hate who you are, you will work hard to become a different person. The day you hate poverty, you become rich. Believe me. You will look for ways to do better in life. The way you hate your level education, the day you will say it's enough to have a bachelor, you will go for masters. I've been having a bachelor for the last 10 years. I'm stinking with this bachelor. Kila mahali ukienda ukiintroduce I'm so and so bachelor degree. I'm so and so paka siku nyingine ukiintroduce ah ah tutakujua wewe bachelor kachin. Uh, you know so now it becomes a national anthem eh? Mm. You have to change, ndio? You have to grow. You grow. Lakini you will never grow wakati wewe ume umetosheka na vile na vile ulivyo. Ni lazima na mwanafunzi hawezi kufanya bidii mpaka umfanye ajichukie vile alivyo. Some people study because they are tired of the home they are living. They want to have a different home. Sio? Some other people study hard because they are so angry with the way their fathers were living, earning money very hard, difficult. Ugali kila siku sukuma. Oh. 
Hakuna biryani nyumbani. I have to get biryani. Eh, eh. You know what I'm talking about? Some of us thought that way. Kila asubuhi ukiamka baba anapata shilingi 10 sina. Mama shilingi 50 sina. Ah, national anthem. Every morning, every morning hakuna hakuna. When now you say mimi nitasoma ni some mpaka siku moja watoto wangu hata nataka kitu alafu mimi sina there has to be something that makes you uncomfortable na wanafunzi wetu lazima wa feel uncomfortable lakini hii mambo yetu unajua and that's where the problem is with us muswahili muswahili nyumbani biryani iko pilau iko kitanda iko ac iko pocket money iko unafikiri huyu mtoto atasoma kweli man it's hard study is not easy man it's hard it's hard kila kitu iko hata account ushamfungulia na yuko form 1 na ana an account na ATM card can you imagine that simu anayo kubwa hata kushinda mwalimu i mean there has to be a moment when you feel i need more to become more it's very important so focus on the entire class again do not talk over student chatter chatter means the classroom must have a chatter agreed between the teacher and the student this is our classroom what the constitution are we going to operate on in this classroom now you make that constitution together with the students you have a very i'm sure we are all professionals so we write down the the word professional and i will summarize my talk using that word professional and then we look at ethics i want to believe uh we've all uh, perused through the tsc code of ethics or conduct and therefore we know exactly what is expected of us as teachers but i don't want to go into those legal tassels i will just use the word professional ethics to explain how we can maintain very high level very high standards of uh, our profession called teacher what we need to remember is that we are called teachers because we are thoughtful. Whatever we do, we do after thorough analysis. Tunaitwa walimu kwa sababu sisi ni watu ambao tunafikiria kabla hatujaamua. So T on the word teacher most of the time is described as being thoughtful. Before you do anything, think first. Okay? Analyze what you want to do. So that the implication will always remain positive. We are teacher because we are called, we are told we are thoughtful. Tunafikiria kabla tujafanya yale ambayo tunamua kufanya. Tunatumia uh, akilize tu vizuri kama walimu. We are teachers because we are highly endowed with the ability to change others. We are endowed with abilities to change others. We have the power to change others. Okay, so we need to be careful of how we use the power in changing other people. More so, our own students. How do we make them better people? So we are teachers, kwa sababu tuko na hiyo power, ya kuwa ongoza, kunyorosha, watoto wetu, wanafunzi wetu, wawe katika njia ambayo inafaa. We are teachers because we always aspire for greatness a teacher is not a small person if some of us have had the opportunity to read the book think big and grow rich think big and become great those are very interesting books to read as a teacher kasa bizina kupatia mwelekeo wa kujijenga ili kusudi we ule mwalimu ambaye unathaminiwa katika katika jamii we are called teachers because we are creative. We are always innovative. See for creativity. We do things differently. We apply knowledge based on situations. That's why we are teachers. We are teachers because we work hard. We don't take things for granted. And always hard work works. No one has become who they have become without hard work. Therefore, hard work is a principle that a teacher cannot avoid applying in their day-to-day -day, uh, endeavors and activities and issues like that. We are teachers because we know how to engage others. We know how to engage parents. We know how to engage students. We know how to engage the community. 
That's why we are teachers. We know our limits. We draw lines. We know where to stop. We don't go beyond what others could use against us. We are teachers because we are realistic. We know very well that learners are different. Kuna wengine wana pita, wengine wana struggle. And therefore we are very realistic when we do our things. We are teachers. We are teachers because we are willing to sacrifice. My dear colleagues, brothers and sisters, you can't go up if you don't want to give up. There are certain things in life you must give up if you want to go, to go up. If you hold on to everything you have, you become too heavy. And therefore flying higher, soaring like an eagle, becomes really difficult. If you want to go higher and higher in your life, make yourself light. And one way of making yourself light is to let go things that don't concern you. Let go things that don't work for you. Let go things that are disturbing you. Let go things that are really, you know, harassing, embarrassing you. So you remain a very light individual. And when you are light, you will always fly very high. But when you are heavy, it becomes really difficult. You see, the eagle is the only bird in the bird kingdom that lives for longest period of time. According to science, the eagles live for 70 years. They live longer than some of us. But at the age of 40, the eagle has a decision to make. The eagle has to choose to change or die. If the eagle will choose to change, kwa sababu the wings that the eagle is using to fly, they become thicker. Therefore, it cannot use them to fly anymore. Zile mbawa zinakuwa nyingi na nzito. Awezi kureka tena. Alafu na zile kucha ambazo anatumia kushika wale prey wake, chakula chake, zina kunjana. Awezi kushika tena. Na mdomo wake una kunja, awezi kula tena. Asa ikiwa kucha hazishiki tena nyama na mdomo hauli tena na mbawa zimekuwa nzito, kumanisha kingine kinachofuata ni kifo. Lakini kama eagle atakubali to go through a process of very painful change, then the eagle is granted another 30 years to live. So what the eagle does, it goes higher on the mountain, sits on a cliff of a mountain, first will break the beak, can you imagine, breaking the beak, and then wait for a new beak to grow. After the new beak has grown, the eagle will use the new beak to remove the old nails and wait for the new nails to grow. And then use the new nails and remove all the feathers and wait for new feathers to go. To grow. The whole process takes 90 days, three months. Now you can imagine a bird without feathers, a bird without a beak, a bird without nails, the bird that uses the nail to catch the prey. But it is after going through that change that the eagle is granted another 30 years. Baada ya kupitia hicho kipindi kigumu sana anapewa tena miaka 30 ya ya kuishi. And you and me we have no choice. There are times when things really become tough, hard, difficult. But that's, those are the moments when we discover who we truly are. When things are working out for us, atupati nafasi ya kujijua where our weaknesses are and where our strengths are. But the time when things are hard, that's the moment when we learn who we truly are. But change is necessary in life. You can never remain the same person every day. They say it is an insult for a human being to remain at the same level on two different days. <coughs> you must make sure your Monday is different from your Sunday and your Sunday is different from your Saturday. Ikiwa siku mbili zako za maisha zimefanana kilimu, zimefanana kiukuaji, then you are a dead person. You must make sure there is a consistent change. Kuna mabadiliko katika ujuzi wako. <coughs> Kuna mabadiliko katika utendakazi wako. Kuna mabadiliko katika ilimu yako. Kuna mabadiliko katika ufahamu wako. Kuna mabadiliko katika kuingiliana na watu wengine. Remember, your network is your net worth. In life, you become who you know. If you surround yourself with losers, you definitely become a loser. 
ikiwa wale wote unaowajua katika maisha yako ni watu wa hali ya chini hali duni watu wasio na uwezo wa kuendelea juu na wewe unabaki chini <coughs> lakini ukiji shikanisha na watu ambao wanabidii ya kwenda juu basi na wewe unakuwa huna budi ni lazima uende juu ukikaa na wasomi na wewe unakuwa msomi lakini ukikaa na wapumbavu na wajinga bahati mbaya hata wewe unakuwa mpumbavu unakuwa unakuwa mjinga ukikaa na muzaji mafuta mazuri wewe pia unanukia vizuri lakini ukikaa na mchumaji vyuma basi kanzu yako itatoboka tu kwa zile tete za za moto so network yani the circle of influence is crucial in human growth and, and development and that helps you kuwa mtu ambaye una mawazo na ruwaza na vision ya kusonga ya kusonga mbele kama mwalimu kwa hivyo as a teacher you are a professional na kukuwa professional p you must be somebody who is conscious of his or her productivity you are not defined by what you say many of us say a lot of things we are not defined by what we think we are always in life defined by what we do kwa sababu what we think and how we feel no one can see that lakini yale tunayoyafanya kila siku ndio yanayochangia tuite walimu wazuri ama walimu wabaya walimu wenye ujuzi ama walimu hawana ujuzi our action no wonder they say action speaks louder than than words so being a professional literally means yule mtu ambaye action zake anaziangalia vizuri ili productivity yake iwe ya hali ya ya juu kwa sababu pale ndipo judgment ina inapatikana kwamba wewe umezalisha matokeo mazuri wewe ni mwalimu mzuri lakini umezalisha matokeo mabaya wewe ni mwalimu mwalimu mbaya so you have to be very conscious na ndio maana as i said earlier Stephen Covey in his book Seven Habits of the Most Effective Teacher he says a teacher is someone who is proactive proactive meaning that ungoji shida zikaja unaona mambo yakibadilika na unayapatiliza kabla hajakupatiliza Okay you take actions before it is too late. Unaona mtoto ameanza uchezaji wa aina fulani, ameanza ku drop katika masomo yake, ungoji paka akapata e, you take action before things are out of of control. You are a proactive individual. Unaona kwa sababu dalili ya mvua ni ma mawingu na siku njema inaonekana usubuhi. Kila kitu kinakuja na dalili zake. Lazima wa man nu'amiru hu nunaktisu fil halqi fala ya'kilun wewe wasema Mungu hakuambii utakufa lini anakuambia because you can see you are losing strength si ndio pole pole mambo yanabadilika katika maisha yako so you know you are about to go because what you could do 10 years ago you can't do again today so things are getting bad for you okay the winter is coming slowly 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 kwa hivyo you have to be a proactive individual unaangalia kule unapoenda ni mahali pa aina gani na yale unayofanya saa hizi je atachangia kukufanya yule mtu ambaye unataka kuwa kesho because what you do today will affect you to tomorrow yesterday forget about it is history imeenda kama jana ulikuwa mzuri ulikuwa mbaya hiyo imeenda tomorrow is mystery hakuna najua but today is a gift na ndio maana wale waingereza wanasema present tense is a present Now if you use your present very well your future becomes great. Kwa sababu future is not waited for, remember. Future is created. And the best way of predicting your future is to create it yourself. Tell yourself, I want to be this kind of a teacher in the future. Today I am teaching in a classroom, tomorrow I want to teach the whole world. They listen to me because I'm a great teacher. So it's very important to be a focused teacher and that's why you are a professional you are always unatizama ile productivity yako na kuwa mwangalifu na matokeo na matokeo yako a professional r is someone who is always able to relate well katika lugha ya biashara kuna kitu kinaitwa relational capital relational capital inamaanisha unaweza kuwa tajiri hata kama huna capital ya kuinvest What you need to do is to know somebody else who has that capital. Ili umtumie yeye kufanya investment na baadaye nyote muta mtafaidika. Relational capital. 
Okay? Na ndio maana unakuta ni muhimu katika phone book yako uwe na watu ambao wanaweza kukujenga kwenda juu sio watu wa kukuleta chini kila siku. Wewe unataka kukua tajiri alafu kila unamjua ni maskini. Utakuwa tajiri wapi? Kila rafiki yako ni fukara. Utakuwa tajiri siku gani? Hata kukusaidia na alfu moja hawawezi. Ukapata shida leo ukaweka WhatsApp group jamani nisaidieni. Hakuna mtu hata anaweza kulipa mia. You get my point? Lakini ukiwa na mtandao wa watu ambao wana senti, wewe fungua WhatsApp group. In one hour you raise one million. Moja naweza 100,000, moja 50, moja 10. Umepata capital ya kwanza business. You haven't seen people like that? The people are like that. In one day in a WhatsApp group they can raise one million. One million. Na kuna WhatsApp group hata mia moja ni shida. Kwa sababu kila mtu yuko down. So katika maisha ni lazima ubalance wa kuchukua na wakukupa kuna wengine wanakuchukua kutoka kwako lakini na wewe una mahali pia una unachukua na ndio maana wanasema an effective human being an effective human being anajua kwamba siku moja atakuwa mgonjwa kwa hivyo ana namba ya, ya simu ya daktari anajaribu kufanya urafiki na daktari kwa sababu anajua kuna siku atamuhitaji pengine usiku umekuwa mgonjwa hauna pesa huyu ukimpigia atakutibu utamlipa baadaye Mtu ambaye ni effective anajua ana watoto wanataka kusoma. Kwa hivyo anajuana na watu katika nyanja za elimu, wamsaidie kupata scholarship. Mtu anayekuwa effective anajua kwamba ulimwengu wa sasa ni ulimwengu wa dhulma, mara ardhi yako inaezaibiwa, nyumba yako inaweza nyang'anywa, kwa hivyo you need a lawyer. Hu atakusaidia hata kama hauna pesa, si ndio? Eh. Also in this life you need a spare tire. Eh unaweza kuwa na very beautiful wife one day akasumuka asubuhi akakwambia mimi naenda zangu si ndio sasa ukikuwa na spare tire unampigia hello there is vacancy now sawa so, sawa instead of you getting a heartbreak ukibaki ukilia pale angalau upate mtu akufuta machozi si ndio hiyo ni commercial break tu hiyo sawa sawa hiyo haimo haimo katika katika ile presentation haimo but what i'm trying to say is that create a good network una walimu unawajua katika national schools una walimu unawajua katika skuli za karibu ili kusudi unajenga ule mustawa wako wa walimu unajenga una mwalimu unamjua ambaye anafanya vizuri katika shule fulani katika somo lako alisa atakutumia na ile material yeye anata anatumia lakini ukikuwa peke yako how do you grow you can't grow so it's very very as a professional you must create a very good network that is called relational capital kuna watu akiwa na shida ni kuinua simu tu i have a problem with the police eh, amekusimamisha na gari yako anapigwa wewe acha huyo mzee apite shida yako nini pata huyo mzee one phone call si ndio eh, kuna watu wengine hawana pesa wako broke it's just one call ndio si vipi hebu rusha ka 1000 hapo aulizwi wataka kufanya nini ah, inatumwa tu haujaona watu kama hao yeah are you one of them <laughs> Are you one of them? So you have to build that personality eh as a professional. Have a relationship. And it begins here, yeah? It begins here in our staff room, in our school. If we have a very good relationship, then working becomes much easier because we are all professionals. Professional or we work objectively as a professional, you should know what brought you here. You should know why you are doing what you are doing. So that at the end of the day if you have your own problems and your own issue why are you interested in other people's problems you can't handle your own problems okay and you are busy trying to find out the problems of other people they will kill you my friend what for where deal with your own life eh angalia tu maisha yako usiingilie maisha ya watu ya watu wengine otherwise you die of heart attack you die of stress squeeze high blood pressure it's very common si ndio Yeah, they're saying about 55% of Kenyans are H, H, they have high blood pressure. Diabetes has become a very common language now. Okay, even nursery school kids have diabetes. Why? The stress levels are very are very high. So as a professional you need to know how to conduct yourself to avoid incidences ambazo zitakuleta chini na kukuathiri kufanya kazi yako. F Remember always as a profession you must be gui- guided by fairness fairness when you make a mistake admit 
you're wrong. Sawa sawa. And when people are trying to step on you, then make sure you get up from the floor. Because if you are on the floor, ni kwamba umewapatia license watu wa kukanyage. What is on the ground is a carpet. It is stepped on. If you don't want people to step you on you, you have to go up and wear the crown. Become a ceiling. A seal and people will never step on you. So, and to remove yourself from the ground, that means you have to be a competent individual. Ili watu wasikudharau. Ukifanya kazi yako vyema, umewanyang'anya watu uhuru wa kukudharau. Lakini ukifanya kazi yako vibaya, umewapatia watu license wa kuita ofisini kila wakati. Sasa wewe vipi jana ulikuja school wewe vipi mbona lesson yako wewe can you imagine that everybody somebody is calling you every time every somebody is calling you every time somebody is rep- I mean that slavery by nature is a 21st century slavery ukikubali kufuatwa fuatwa nyuma kila wakati you have to live your own life and become a free individual na ku live your own life and kuwa free ni kwamba you do whatever you need to do very very well mtu hana sababu ya kukuita na kukusomea na kukanya kama mtoto mdogo you are not a kid my friend you went to college you went to high school you have a degree and still somebody calls you to tell you you are stupid you didn't do your work can you imagine that wewe mbona mshenzi hivi man i have a degree and you are calling me mshenzi yes mshenzi degree yako haikusaidii you are doing things in a wrong way contrary to the degree that you have asa umempatia mtu ruhusa akutukane si ndio you shouldn't do it. as a professional you need to kind of safeguard your integrity And to safeguard your integrity is to block people from having an excuse of insulting you whether directly or indirectly. Okay? And that's why I say whatever chochote kile unachokifanya katika maisha kifanye vizuri kweli kweli so that you become an asset and not a liability. An asset, an asset, somebody who is regarded to be adding value katika maisha mengine. E on the word professional you have to be that person who empowers the reason you know people have to say because of teacher so and so mathematics improvement uh, there, there is a mathematics improvement in this school kwa sababu ya mwalimu fulani ah Quran siku hizi inasoma tilawa nzuri sana kera kizuri sana kwa sababu ya mwalimu fulani kwa sababu ya mwalimu fulani kiingereza siku hizi kime improve shuleni lazima uwe mtu ambaye una add value katika maisha ya watu wengine usiwe mtu ambaye ni minus ni minus kwamba kuanzie kuje kama mwalimu wa madrasa ndio akhlaq zimekuwa mbovu katika shule kuanzie uje kama mwalimu wa physics ndio grades zime promoka katika shule that is unprofessional being a professional person is always making sure your value is growing higher and and higher and that is for your own self and for your own good believe me the day you stop working for other people and you work for yourself you become a master of your own life believe me the day you stop working for other people and you say i am now working for myself i'm not working for the peanut salary i'm getting i'm working because i have passion for what i am doing you become a free individual lakini ikiwa unafanya kazi kwa sababu mtu mwingine anakutuma wewe ni mtumwa sasa wewe ni mtumwa wa watu And I don't think in the 21st century we should entertain uh, the, the concept of slavery in our in our lives. We are free human beings. Lakini hatuwezi kuwa na uhuru wa kimaisha kama tunakutoa fursa za watu kutukemea kila wakati. Akutuuliza maswali magumu ambayo yana obvious answers. That is also a one way of, one one form of insults. Someone is asking you an obvious question. You know, has an obvious answer and you are there listening because you did not play your your part so it's important to any watu ambao tunajenga wengine ili na Mungu naye awe na huruma atujenge sisi zaidi na na zaidi when you give one you get 10 when you get give 10 you get 100 if imagine in our school of education at the university there's a girl who serves us tea every time we are interested in taking tea she's called monica Last two years she had a daughter in in in, in a precious blood high school uh, in Ruta. And then one professor of physics called Professor Uko had a son in another school in Nairobi. So when results were announced in 2019, Monica's daughter got an A minus and Professor son got a D plus. As, as we were taking tea, we were like no joking with each other. I mean, what a contradiction. 
eh what an irony of life a t girl daughter a minus a professor son d plus what went wrong what went wrong then one of our colleague who is bolder than us said man stop disturbing yourself this monica lady she's doing her work diligently every time you want a, co- a cup of coffee monica bring me coffee coffee is there i need it with a snack snack is there she's laughing with everybody look at this stupid professor always frowning his face and the first thing he does when he goes to the classroom with the new students he says physics is a difficult subject no one is going to pass in this class I have never taught a class which has had 100% pass. The best grade you can get in this class is a B. Now do you think if you treat other people's children that way, God would spare your own child? Yeah? If you are busy failing other people's children, do you think God would spare your own child? No. No. So the D plus was an obvious, you know? It's an obvious description of the behavior of the professor because he was busy always retake re- retake retake soup 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 you know half of the class soup <laughs> I mean why are you giving people soup every other semester eh? why can't you make them pass yes yeah, so, so you have to be very careful what you do unto other children other people's children will also be done unto your own child so ukiwa unafanya mbaya mbaya huko darasani na watoto wengine be careful eh? the wrath of god will also come on on you so try to maintain that that empowerment structure again we are saying s maintain acceptable standard as a professional have some standard my friend hata kama hawezi kwenda kwenye designer shop kuna mitumba squeezy the camera type you know what i'm talking about peleka laundry my friend people will wonder where did you buy this shirt sindio but that standard have some standard so that even the student and everybody else and the parents say yes this is a teacher kama uwezi kununua kofia ya kito ya lamu ya 2020 kuna za kichina squeeze they look like just like those ones of lamu <laughs> si ndio <laughs> eh so you look presentable because that's very important that's very very important na kama una kabambe don't show it in front of the students man kamuli kamwizi you have to have some some class don't you think so it's important it's really really important to have a class so that the students can know the difference between you and and them you don't have to be too obvious anak allah you know every other thing is that you are so low mbele ya wanafunzi wako you are so low mbele ya wazazi wako you lose that 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 respect as as a professional or as as a teacher the next c you must os you must always be systematic ni lazima u follow system maisha yana systems everything has a law na ufuata ile law kwamba kufundisha ni lazima utafanya preparation utengeze scheme utengeze lesson plan kufundisha ni lazima utizame what do you call the syllabus ni lazima utafute reference book you have to follow the system when you are in the system life becomes comfortable lakini ukiwa haufuati system you will always have some challenges one way or or the other again in the interest of time it's very important for us to show interest i interest in other people's in other people's progress be happy wengine wakiendelea congratulate them celebrate achievements za watu wengine na watu wata celebrate achievements zako na wewe uta achieve kwa njia nyingi ambazo hata pengine huku expect kwamba ungeweza ku achieve it's good to celebrate success particularly the success of other people so that you can also become successful remember my dear friends or be an open minded believe me at the end of the day from the womb to the tomb is struggle for knowledge from the darkness of the womb of the mother to the darkness of the womb of the grave in between here no matter how long you live don't stop learning don't stop learning soma soma kwa njia moja ama nyingine lakini you have to polish yourself ili hata ukenda darasani unaonekana unasomesha mambo tofauti kila kila siku sio kurudia rudia mpaka wa wanafunzi wanajua ukisema neno hili linalofuata ni lile ukisema hivi utakachosema kingine ni hiki kwa sababu notes ni hizo ni hizo hizo kila group unasomesha notes ni hizo hizo amna kubadilisha amna kupolish amna kurekebisha no you are static my friend life is about growth if you don't grow you are dead na unajua 
sifa ya maji yasiyotembea yananuka na yana chanzo cha maradhi ni maji yasiyotembea katika maisha mwanadamu asiyekuwa pia yeye ananuka kwa sababu watu wanamjua katika njia moja tu hajabadilika kila wakati so it's good to grow and as a professional you have to improve every even if you cannot go back for a full course do short courses online if you cannot do short courses online which are free of charge you just need to have internet connectivity read some books za mambo ambayo unafundisha ili kusudi u empower you empower yourself again as a professional you are supposed to be neutral sisi ni watu wa dini tofauti tofauti sisi ni watu wa kabila tofauti tofauti tunafanya kazi mahali pamoja respect is key when it comes to professionalism and when you respect others others will also respect you ukishimu wengine na wengine pia wataku eshim so ni muhimu kukuwa neutral Kenya is known to be a tribal ethnic nation you know thank god we are not known to be religious you know we don't have religious conflicts in Kenya I went to school in Nigeria for seven years. There, a Muslim can never sit next to a Christian. Wow. There will be war. You know what I'm talking about? It's war. Because they will start arguing and you'll see them fighting. There is always one war or the other between Christians and Muslims. Thank God. In Kenya, we are really peaceful. We are living together, working together, doing together. Kama umekaa na mtu ambaye siwa dini yako mwambene na kushimu vile ulivu tu. Na kushimu, na kushimu sana. Na kushimu. Ambia, ambia huyo rafiki yako. Mwambie bwana na kushimu. Eh. Mm. Sasa vile tunaheshimiana, si ndio? Eh, muhimu sana. Kwa sababu hii ni fitna ambayo inaleta shida shida sana. Eh. Eh, in the word professional, you must be able to associate what you're doing with what is good in life. It's called the law of association and assimilation. So A of association and A of assimilation. Kwamba you adapt yale masomo unayosomesha na mambo inayofanya unaweza kuiadapt katika njia inayofaa. L in the word professional. Professional ni lile mtu ambaye anaweza ku overcome limit aonyeshi uchafu wake mbele ya watu. Kwa sababu kila mtu kulu ibn Adam khata'a, si ndio? Khata'u ya wa khairu khata'un at-tawabun. Yaani kila mwanadamu anakasoro mahali, si ndio? Hakuna mwanadamu aliyekamilika. Lakini haina haina dharura ya kuonyesha kasoro za wako zako mbele za wako. Si ndio? Unajaribu kuzificha zile kasoro zako. Lakini ikiwa ni mtu ambaye unaonyesha zile kasoro zako kila mahali, hata wanafunzi wanakujua we unavuta sigara. Si ndio? Wanajua. Eh, wanafunzi wanafunzi wanajua unapiga piga vichupa vichupa kidogo kidogo hivi. Wanajua? Eh, wanafunzi wanajua we ni mtu wa mogoka mogoka eh wanajua wanafunzi wanajua wewe kajogo kajogo haupitwi wanajua si ndio eh wanakuona wanakuona at the end of the day you know wanafunzi wanaanza kukudharau dhara naanza kukudha alafu na saha una unajiuliza kwa nini wanafunza wanasikiliza siku hizi kwa nini wanadharau siku hizi kwa nini shule si shimiki tena siku hizi no 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 it is what you do as a professional you have to respect your yourself kuna mahali ufai kuenda si ndio kuna watu wengine ufai By the way kuna watu wengine ukifuatana nao ukionekana tu ushakufa. You know that? Kuna watu wengine ukionekana nao tu you are done. It's called personality crucifixion. Umekuwa crucified. Na kuna watu wengine ukionekana nao wow hata ukaenda bank utauliza mkopo utapewa. Kwa sababu ulionekana na mtu fulani. Unamjua fulani? Ndio. Ah lazima uwe ni mtu mzuri. Wewe utalipa mkopo. Si ndio? Lakini kuna wengine ay, 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 ay. so be careful who you walk around with because that affects your level of professionalism also lazima ujue uwe mwangalifu hususan kama mwalimu ni nani unajiweka karibu na so overcoming limitation kuangalia nimesema usubui unafanya sort analysis yako mimi strength yangu ni hii mimi weakness yangu ni hii opportunities za kujibadilisha ziko hapa na threat lazima kuna mambo mengine lazima uyaache ili kusudi kuwa yule mtu ambaye unastahili ku kuwa wengine unajua usiwe usiwe kama ndovu unajua ndovu akiwa mtoto anafungwa kamba nyembamba kwenye mti anakuwa na hiyo kamba mpaka anakuwa jigovu lakini bado anashikwa na ile kamba nyembamba imani yake inamwambia huwezi kutoka hapa na ni kuivuta tu ile mguu wake na kamba imekatika lakini hawezi kwa sababu amefanya ile belief system kwamba mimi nimeshikwa na hii 
kamba na sisi tusiwe kama ndovu kuna mambo mengine ukiyafanya ambayo hayakusaidii kuenda mbele unarudi nyuma na wanasema a haya hayanifai ni lazima yule ni mwalimu nifanye mambo ya aina fulani so to be ethical you must engage with other members of staff with students appropriately engage appropriately you know even if sometimes you know in a school where there are men and women girls and boys even if your eyes are seeing something you're not supposed to see lower your gaze si ndio siku moja tunatembea na sahibi yangu tulikuwa tunasomesha university of zanzibar pamoja sasa tunatembea katika barabara za zanzibar as visiting lecturers nikamwona naangalia msichana mwingine sana ana kwa sasa kwa mbesta bana vip bana mbona ataibisha asema mtume asema angalie mara moja kwa hivyo naangalia mara moja tu nikirudisha niangalie tena naomba you stupid my friend umeangalia kwa haraka zaidi ya dakika kumi alafu naangalia hiyo ndio mara moja yako asema si tumeambia tuangalie tu sasa stack kondoa jicho maana kingi kondoa jicho stack kurudisha tena kwa hivyo ni mara moja tu sitarudisha mara ya pili no that, that's not right you have to be very very careful kwa sababu hii pia inaleta fitna eh sisi hapa ni shule ambayo kuna wasichana si ndio na kuna pia vija, vijana kuna mamadamu kuna ma kuna na masaa pia si ndio eh mara nyingine jicho halina pazia si ndio lakini ukiona kitu ambacho ufai kuona unasema shetani ashindwe <laughs> alafu maisha inaenda inaenda mbele unasahau ile kitu ambayo umeona so it's very important because being ethical means knowing how to indulge how to engage na wengine bila kuwakosea heshima bila ya kuadharau na bila ya kuonyesha mambo ambayo sio ya sawa. T H katika ethics, T katika ethics, you must always be thorough in what you. Don't do things halfway. Don't do things halfway. Usiseme okay, so no problem. At least I can get a mean of C+. Plus. It's good enough. There's an A, my friend. Why are you working for C+? Plus? There's an A. Go for A. They say when you aim, aim at the moon. If you miss the moon, at least you land on one of the stars. Ukilenga lenga mwezi. Ili ukikosa mwezi, angalau angalau upate nyota. Usilenge nyota. Ukilenga nyota utapata jiwe. Always aim haya. Eh hata ukitaka pepo, uliza Firdaus, inaitwaje ile pepo ya juu zaidi? Eh. Siku moja malaika wa hukumu ilikuwa anatoa hukumu hasa mabwana mawili walikuwa wahukumiwe hawa. Mmoja ni taxi driver, mmoja ni sheikh mkubwa sana. Kwa kitoa wazi na darsa msikitini kila siku. Hasa yule malaika akaanza na yule taxi driver. Akamwambia yule taxi driver wewe ulipokuwa duniani umefanya kazi nzuri sana. Yaani, kwa hivyo tunakupeleka ile pepo ya juu kabisa. Na hii ni fimbo yako ya almasi na hili ni joho lako la silk. Haya, yalla, enjoy yourself. Sasa yule imam alipoona taxi driver amefanywa mambo yale ye yeah, akafikiria vipi kwamba yangu itakuwa makubwa kuliko ya ya huyu akifika wakati wake yule akamwambia ah hata wewe ulijaribu lakini wewe utaenda hii ya chini kwa hivyo shika hii bakora ya ya, ya mbao na shika na hili joho la sufi haya Allah akasema haiwezekani taxi driver hai mimi lo maisha yangu yote nahubiri nenda na Mungu akasema no here we judge by results we don't look at what you do we look at the outcome of what you do huyu taxi driver alipokuwa akisema akipeleka driver akipeleka taxi kule duniani alikuwa akipeleka vibaya mpaka watu wakisema takbir oh akbar oh akbar ushapata gari driver apeleka vibaya mpaka akamkumbuka Mungu sasa Haleluya Jesus Jesus eh, driver apeleka mbaya sasa yule akamwambia unaona watu walimkumbuka Mungu kwa sababu ya driving yake lakini wewe ukitoa wazi watu <laughs> sasa ulifanya kazi gani kila ukizungumza watu walikuwa kilala kweli ulitoa darasa lakini darasa zako zote watu walikuwa wakilala hazikuwa na athari and that's why it's very important to look at the result is what you are doing giving you what you deserve katika maisha being a professional h You have to look at your habits. It is the little things that we do every day. Finally, they make us who we become in in life. Zile tabia za, tabia zetu. Tabia za kusema ukweli ama uongo, tabia za kuwa na bidii ama kuwa mvivu, tabia za kuchelewa ama kuja mapema. The difference is clear. Usiku na mchana hauna, you know, 
taklifu ya kueleza ni vitu viwili tofauti na kweli na uongo you know halali na haramu hazina taklifu ni rais sana kuzijua kwa hivyo ni lazima tuwe na zile habits kama nilizosema kuwa proactive number two, thinking with the end in mind number three, to synergize number four, fast think fast number five, win win approach number six, understand before you are understood and number seven, sharpen you are So, tia kisu makalia, tia uh, kisu makali ili kiweze ku, kukata kwa haraka. Na we kama mwalimu, tia makali ilimu yako, ili iwe na nguvu ya ku affect wanafunzi wako. Being professionally ethical, you have to be able to inspire without using your words. Kuna watu wengine ukiwaona tu unakumbuka mungu. Na wengine ukiwaona unamona shetani. Am I right or wrong? Kuna watu wengine ukiwaona wanakukumbusha mazuri. Na kuna watu wengine ukiwaona wanakukumbusha mabaya. Sasa what kind of a person are you? Je, yeah, wewe ni kielelezo cha mazuri ama ni kielelezo cha mabaya? Je, yeah, wanafunzi wako wakikuona do they see hard work or did they see mediocrity? Wanafunzi wako wakikuona je, yeah, wanaona nidhamu ama waona mchezo tu? Je, yeah, wanafunzi wako wakikuona wanaona A ama wanaona E? Eh, I also ran a school called Omurgura and one day I had a problem with a certain student form 3. Kwenda darasani wanafunza kasema, "Sa, huyu mwalimu eh wa geography akija sisi tunaona hii tu, tunaona hii tu. Kwa sababu zako mwalimu mtoe huyu, tunaona hii tu. Vipi? Because of the way he's teaching, atufundishi mwalimu. Sisi tukimwona tushaona hii." Sasa wewe ni mwalimu ukiingia darasani wanafunzi wana hiyo isha kuja hiyo. Ama ni mwanafunzi mwalimu ukiingia darasani wanaona A hiyo definitely here we are going to get A kwa sababu ya njia unavyofundisha na unavyo so it's very important your image your image remember i talked about the brand in the morning ndugu zangu learn this from me today kama kuna kitu you should never compromise in your life is your reputation very difficult to make but to destroy is so is your reputation is very important the way people see you the way what people say about you is key kabisa reputation reputation protect it jealously religiously kwa sababu ukisha upoteza you are a nobody you are a nobody hata wewe na ma degree ya aina gani you are still nobody and ndio maana unaona ma professor ambao wako miserable you know mpaka sasa wako karibu ku retire they are still living in staff houses and they are about to retire from staff house where are you going ushaenda mazishi ya professor ukifika nyumbani kwao hakuna nyumba na anawekwa nje huko Now you wonder this guy has been a professor all this year what happened what happened this guy has been a teacher all his life is retiring now anaziko wapi anata mali ya kuwekwa ya kuziko you have to be careful my friend your reputation is very very important kuna watu wengine hata baada ya kuretire they become everybody wants them everybody everybody do you know mr mangi who was in alidina first and then memon He had to tell those Indians I enough is enough I have to go now. Do you want me to die in this office? I have to go. They were always saying don't go mwalimu give us another one more year we'll give you more salary. Anakubali mzee wa watu anabaki because he was a very good principal. Aya ana go no. Paka akasema no 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 now I am sick. I can't take this stress of being a leader anymore. You have to allow me to go. You get you get that point when he was living memon he was going to 80s 80s as a principal going to 80s wewe ukifika 60 tu unaambia wewe nenda nyumbani wewe you are so useless eh hata kabla uje retire umeletewa barua miaka mitatu iliyopita utaretire baada ya miaka mitatu watu wanakukumbusha rafiki yangu you are going to retire and because that's what TSC does eh? they bring you the first letter three years earlier wanakungoja ngoja wanakungoja ngoja when it is about two years then they bring you another one uh, to remind you you need to prepare you're going home then they bring you another one six months to retirement then they bring you the one to tell you go and leave now and after that leave you are no more our staff so it's very crucial reputation 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 is very important and reputation comes from what you do not what you say and how you feel again uh, inspiring people without using words vitendo vyako tu vinatosha vitendo vyako tu vinatosha kuongoza binadamu wengine nani imam bukhari alisema hivi kwamba waelezeni watu islamu bila ya kutumia maneno 
Eh wafanyeni watu wapende Uislamu bila kutumia maneno kwa sababu tutafanya vipi? Nasema kwa tabia zenu kwa na tabia nzuri. Kwa na tabia nzuri tu. Have good habits. Have good reputation and people will definitely like what you do. Na wanafunzi wanapenda walimu kwa zile reputation zao ambazo wanazo. Alafu muhimu ethic means communicating and following the channel of communication. Mbona wewe uko na shida na principle and you are busy gossiping with the groundsman. Tunaona ile principle. Na, na. Alafu groundsman kujipendekeza anaweza kumwambia principle. Yule jamaa alinambia 1 2 3. See problem has started. Yeah. You have a problem with the manager you go to the manager direct. My friend I have a problem with you. Yeah. There's a book called one management, one minute management style. You have a problem with somebody go tell that person. My friend, I have no problem with you, but what you did to me is not right. Please, I don't want this. Finish. My heart is clean. One minute, finish. Somebody has done something good to you, my friend. I like what you did for me. Congratulations. One minute, finish. Lakini like when you don't want to communicate, no, you end up getting into that other dark side of gossips. And as a professional, gossips are not very healthy. They really work bad on your your side. Unakuwa muoga. Unakuwa stressed. Unaishi na tension. Ukiona yule mtu uliyemsengenya unasikia ku kubabaika sijakawa ameshaambiwa sijakawa ameshasikia sijakawa principal amesikia nilisema hivi sijakawa manager alisikia nilisema you you become very uncomfortable it's always good to be open communicate tell people how you feel tell people what you want tell people so that at the end of the day you do not use the other means of communication and then finally s of ethics is sacrifice My dear brother and sister, do more than what you are asked to do. In a philosophy nzuri sana ya maisha. Do more than what you are asked to do and that is a good philosophy ya maisha. As as Abu Huraira fraternity, I want to leave you with this presentation. And this presentation says if between friends and partners we were geese, uh-huh, then next The next season when you see the geese migrating going to a warmer place to sort the winter pay attention that they fly in a V formation maybe you'll be interested in knowing why they do it this way they fly in a V formation when they are moving to warmer grounds by flying in V formation when these birds fly in V formation The, the flock increases the flight efficiency by 71% compared to just one bird flying alone when they fly in a group in a v formation when everybody is doing what they expected to do you know the performance improves naturally automatically what lesson do we get from there lesson number one: sharing the same direction and working as a team get us to the destination quicker and easier By helping ourselves accomplishment are greater. So when you play your part, I play my part, we all play our parts. We do what we are expected to do. Our lives, our stay and our progress becomes much easier wherever we find ourselves in. Remember, when a goose leaves the formation, okay, every market has a mad person. In every market kuna mwandazimu kila soko. Na kila shule there's that teacher who is rebellious. In every school The, la, hakukosekani muhogo mcherema lazima uwepo si ndio sasa ule muhogo mcherema ukiamua kwamba wataka kufanya ucherema wake eh hauivi no sawa sawa unapambana na vi mbunga sawa sawa kwa sababu people are prepared also for those who are rebellious so what happens is if they are clever enough they go back wanasalibu amri but if they don't then they suffer They suffer the resistance of the of the air which is not very interesting. Kwa hivyo ni muhimu watu wafanye kazi pamoja na washirikiane. What is the lesson here? The lesson here is lesson number two. By staying in tune and united beside those who are going in the same direction, the effort will be less. It will be easier and pleasing to reach the goals. Everyone will be inclined to accept and give help because we are a strong team. We are working together. We are a school, we are a community. We are brothers and and sisters. Again remember when the leader goose gets tired or discovers that there is an area where somebody else could do a better job, they delegate. 
So what do they do? He gives the end of the information and allows somebody else to take a lead in that particular area. Okay, so that what they are interested in is the output or the outcome. What is the lesson here? The lesson here is to share the leadership. There must be mutual respect between us all the time. Sharing the hardest problems and tasks, gathering our abilities and combine our faculties, talents and resources. Okay, these birds, when they're flying, they fly singing. The geese flying on a V formation, they quack, 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 quack. This is to encourage one another to move on the same speed. That's why we have mottos in our schools. That's why we have slogans in our schools. That's why we have vision in our schools. They are supposed to propel our speed so that we all move on the same, on the same speed, encouraging one another, encouraging each other to achieve the best that we can achieve. Lesson number four. When there is courage and encouragement, the progress is greater. A timely word of encouragement always motivates, helps, and strengthens. It produces the best of benefits. And that's very key in terms of us working together as, as a team. Dear colleagues, when a goose gets sick or is injured or has a problem, okay, the other geese will come and protect and must leave the formation, the other geese will come and protect the one that has a problem. Okay, your subject is not well done. Okay, An other mathematics teacher comes to support you. English is not properly performed. All the English teachers in the school get together to make the subject perform very well. Okay, but when things get bad, other geese leave the formation too and they fly with him, help him out and protect. They remain with him until he dies or is able to fly again. They reach their baby or they just make another V formation. When you become too much, then goodbye. You go away. Where is the lesson here? The lesson here is let's stay beside each other, no matter what the difference is, specifically in terms of difficulty and greater challenges. If we bond together and support each other, if we make true the spirit of teamwork, Regardless of our differences, we can rise to meet our challenge. If we are aware of the feelings of sharing, life will be easier and the passing of years more fulfilling. And I wish you all the best and may God bless you. And thank you very much.